Good evening, party people. My name is Cameron, and welcome to Cookie Clicker. Now, I say welcome as if, like, the door is opening, as if you're coming in for the first time, as if you're seeing something new, something fresh, something exciting. However, if I said that, I would be lying to you. Usually, we try to start things in the very beginning. We try to start things at the, at the, at the, at the alpha, bring it to the zeta. Um, that is not the case today. Instead, I am going to be playing on a, a game of Cookie Clicker that I've been playing for, I think, the past couple months now. This is a very chill session. There is nothing really planned. I was honestly planning on doing something completely different this evening, but I came to a conclusion of mine. I have some things that I'm trying to accomplish. Uh, by things, I mean um, some endeavors of mine. If probably, if you've been around here before, which you may have, you may have been, you may have noticed that I've been working on a little bit of a sewing project. Anna and I, my fiance, my lovely fiance, and I love to do cosplay. And so I usually am the prop guy. I usually try to work on the detailing stuff. Hello, gentlemen of the street, running around on their bicicletas, which probably has a, it's, it's a motorcycle, but I don't know how to say that in Spanish. Um, but I made one, I made one and I completed it. I need to make another one. And I have, today is June 20th. I have about 10 days to do it. And this one took me, I think two months or so. So here's to it. My name's Cameron. I'm very, I'm busy on things. I'm, I keep myself busy. And uh, what I needed to do was I needed to finish my embroidering. So what I decided to do, what's up Dom, Dom Star, hello. What I decided to do was um, I, ha I had planned things. I'm not gonna do that plan. I'm pushing things off. I have more important things to worry about like my cosplay. So I'm gonna work on that and play an idle game. <laughs> did you do the, did you see the milkshake I made today? I did. And it was right on my way to the store, and that's why I forgot to respond to it. <laughs> but I did, and it's got the Oreo froth at the top, which I th I totally appreciate. It reminds me a lot of um, there is um, my dad used to make this chocolate mud, um, and it's like oh my god, it had gummy worms in it. I think it had gummy worms and crushed Oreos and whipped cream and all that stuff. Oh my gosh, it was great. And the, uh, the the mud was one of my favorite things that my father would make for himself and also for his children. I, I'm one of my father's children, naturally. Um, and it was a good, I loved it. It reminded me, it reminded me a lot of that because it was like a, like a, you know, this is an Oreo milkshake. Now imagine that Oreo milkshake, except a lot more chocolate in it, I suppose, and uh, some gummy worms because naturally dirt has worms in it. At least so I've been told. Uh, I haven't, I haven't taken a chance to look at them very often yet, um, but yeah, <laughs> you're my father's child? Yeah, in celebration of Father's Day, I decided to come out as my father's child. I mean, to the people in the inner circle, we've known this for a very long time, dare I say almost 24 years now, no, more than 24 years, almost 25 years now, um, but now, now the world knows as a whole, I am my father's child, and my father is very much aware of this. He is. He's not one of those people who find out much later on in life. He, he's been there since the very beginning. We like that. We like to see that in a father. We do. Um, not everybody has that type of father. RIP. It's unfortunate. But, um, you know, people make the most of it. Even if you don't have a father, you know, you can make the most of it, I think. It's actually, it's, it's a little, I guess it's a little not so good son of me to admit, but I did not see my father on Father's Day. Father's Day was yesterday. It is a Monday. It is Monday today. Yesterday was Father's Day Sunday, uh, June 19th. Um, and I did not see my father, actually. I did not. Because um, a while ago, a buddy of mine organized to go see a show, specifically Game Grumps Live. I saw Game Grumps Live last night, Tournament of Gamers. It was enjoyable. It was a very fun time. Personally, I love, I love Daniel Abaddon. Danny Sexfang, lead singer of Ninja Sex Party. I love that man. That was a bad cookie, unfortunate. And I was so happy. I think this is the closest that I've ever been to Danny. Usually I see him in Ninja Sex Party concerts, but no, this time, oh my God. I was in the balcony seats, front row balcony. And um, oh my God, what a hunk of a man up close. I love that man so much. What a role model. I'm not the kind of person to like idolize individuals or like fawn over people of great wealth, fame or notoriety, but I will spend money to see that man in person. I would. I really would. Mewtwo! 
quote from Lumi 2 would say, I see now that the circumstances of one's birth are irrelevant. It is what you do with the gift of life that determines who you are. Indeed. I remember watching that. Dude, that was one of my favorite movies as a kid. Um, do I remember much of it? Not really. My memories fade very quickly for, um, uh, I, I would say for somebody my age, but I'm over the age of 20, so I guess it's all downhill from here in terms of a mental standpoint. It only gets worse, everybody. Use your memory while you still have it, I suppose. Or do more things. Oh, hi, dear. Oh. In the occasion of Cookie Clicker, I specifically brought out cookies from the fridge, and I was going to eat them cold, but Anna's decided to heat them up. So lucky. Lucky us. Domstar says, I didn't see my dad either, but I gifted him a Super NES Mini. It's so cool. I think my... One of my fondest memories of childhood involving my father aside from him i suppose being there when i was birthed probably sorry if i keep looking to the side i'm looking at my reference because now i use the piece of paper on the back of this one uh, but now i'm just using the counts on this one to be able to do the embroidering on this one so if i'm looking to the sides excuse me um but yeah my one of my fondest memories was playing um super no it's not super this wasn't a super game. What is it called? It's not Mario, it's Pokemon. It's Pokemon Coliseum. No, it's Pokemon Stadium. I get those two mixed up. Coliseum was for the GameCube, Stadium was for the N64. And it was the N64 one. Also, I am now realizing, but I, I remember, uh, th let me finish my dad's story first before I comment on the fact that my computer is freezing from cookie clicker of all things. This shouldn't be a resource intensive game, but it is, apparently. I might have to turn things down a little bit. In any case. But yeah, um, I would just like, I don't know, we had a big blue chair in the living room of my parents' house. And on that chair, I would sit with my father and my younger brother, Julian, who I'm, I, I don't know whether he was talking at that point in time or not. Probably. I'm sure he was able to speak at that point in time. Maybe. Wonderfully. But we would just play, or rather, he would play Pokemon Stadium. And I think his team was like, Bulbasaur, or I think Ivysaur, Charizard, Blastoise, or maybe Squirtle? I, I distinctly remember, I think when Pokemon, no, uh, no, not the Pokemon game. It was, ooh, what was it? It was the Super Smash Brothers game that featured the Pokemon trainer. It was Brawl, I'm pretty sure, when that first key became a thing. When that came out, I was like, yo dad, take a look at that. They picked all your Pokemon many many years later and he was like yo that's pretty cool actually i don't think he had a comment on it at all he's a very he's a very uh he doesn't speak too too much he's very I, I guess that's what's the opposite of outspoken underspoken i guess i don't really know <laughs> seeing a random mouse on the screen is wigging me out oh this one oh because it's literally right below the test i'm so sorry <laughs> i'm gonna be streaming pokemon emerald pretty soon yo oh i look forward to that i have wanted to stream a pokemon game for a long time. Actually, you know, I've wanted to stream a Nintendo game for a long time, but I couldn't convince myself that I was going to do it in a manner that was, I guess, from some perspectives, dishonest to the game. Um, I think there are many purists out there, somewhat like myself, who would agree that if you're going to play a game on a, for a retro console, you should be playing it on the retro console. But alas, I don't necessarily have the luxury of a working GameCube, so I decided to emulate the Paper Mario game. Also, because I kind of wanted to see if it's possible to get it in HD. I'm very happy with it so far. Super Mario Sunshine. Super Mario Sunshine. I did play original- when I did that stream, that was on an actual GameCube. And although I would love to do something that close again, um, it's- it's a little- it's a little difficult to, uh, it's a little difficult to set up. I'm gonna admit that. Uh, it's just like, I think the capture card that I have, technically I have two capture cards. One capture card is for the camera. This camera goes into a capture card, a little, little tech tidbit of information there. Um, and then the other one is this, I'm going to call it shitty because it's shitty. It's a shitty Roxio capture card that for some reason doesn't know whether or not it's supposed to be using HDMI or the AV cables, um, because it just can't make up its mind. So getting that thing to work is a bitch. Also, with this Roxio game card, you actually have to have the Roxio software running in the background in tandem with OBS in order for, actually, you have to start the, first you have to plug in the Roxio thing, 
then you have to turn on the Roxio software, then you have to turn on OBS, then if you don't want Roxio software running in the background, you close out the Roxio software, but if something goes wrong, which inevitably it will, uh, you'll have to turn the Roxio software back on again and take the time to do so. Luckily that hasn't happened to me in the times that I was streaming with the GameCube, but whatever. Have you ever shown your streaming setup? I don't think I ever actually have. I might have taken like Snapchat photos of it. I think maybe once upon a time I've posted it on an Instagram story, but like my setup changes every once in a while. I certainly, I was gonna say, I shouldn't be taking a picture of my setup now because it's an absolute mess, but I would be the first streamer out there, I think, to have an immaculate desk <laughs> when they stream. I could, <laughs> if I if I could very easily grab the camera, I mean, you know what? If somebody reminds me later, I will happily showcase a tour of my stream setup. I used to be able to do that very, very easily when my camera was right here, but it's not. This is the old camera. It's not very good, but that camera over there, I have no problem later on going to do so, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit back for a little bit. In the 200 days of our streak on Snap, I've never sent you it. Oh, my goodness, I... I'll send you a stream, I'll send you a Snapchat of my setup right now. Oreo milkshake. We like to see that. It's the Oreo milkshake. That's in the Discord, too. I'm not going to show anybody's Snapchats on camera, but... Oh! Another cookie clot. Hate that. Hi there, this is Cameron. Oh, wait a minute. I should do... I'm a... Let's do the... Whoa. I'm doing the background. I'm going to... I'm going to go back up a little bit. Take a picture of my streaming setup. There we go. And then I'm going to save that picture, and then I'm going to post it on Discord for a behind-the-scenes. It's a live update. It's on topic. That's what it is. I'll put it on Discord too. I mean, you can show anyone your snaps, uh -oh. Uh -oh. including the one where you had your hair up in a in a mohawk in the shower. It's revealing. It's scandalous. Scandalous indeed. I'm gonna send this. No, oh, that's the first time I've ever posted in the On Topic channel. I've never done that before. <laughs> nice. Unfortunately, I don't have. I don't have a. I didn't save that picture, unfortunately, so I wouldn't be able to share it. But. What was I talking about? I don't know. That's okay. We're not going to pressure ourselves with attempting to remember what it is that we talked about. Um, that's a Cameron of the- that's a Cameron on normal days. On a normal day, Cameron will stress about, um, needing to say the right thing, or keeping people entertained, or whatever, but today, I- I will admit. I will admit. I have a little bit of- a little bit of honesty today. The honesty being, I think I'm- I am a 24-year-old man who has only been working out of college for about nine to 10 months now. And I legitimately feel like I am burning out. I wake up tired, I wake up exhausted. I think to myself, what am I doing with things? I almost feel like, and I, I don't wanna be like, I don't wanna like jokingly like, jokingly state this. Cause I know for some people like who actually experience like midlife crises that it's indeed a crisis, but I feel like I'm having a midlife crisis. Attempting to figure out what it is that I'm trying to do with my life and whether I'm having fun with it and whether I'm making the right decisions and whether or not I should get myself a motorcycle and thank you so much for the heated cookie, dearest. It is not within my field of view, so I very well may forget about it. But it smells great, so I hopefully won't. Dom says, how else am I supposed to get the all the sexy ladies and gentlemen and everything else in between drooling with not for spiking your hair up using shampoo in the shower? And dude, that desk looks so freaking good. I had the screenshot. Oh, you're more than welcome to. I mean, it's because of all the lights. The lights make it look good, I think. Wow, nothing but unfortunate cookies today. I'm gonna revoke my Elder Pledge. I want good cookies. So I explode all the wrinklers. It ain't just the lights, it's everything else. Oh, goodness. I think this is the third or fourth iteration of my desk that has graced this Earth's everything, I think. I've, I've like, I've redone my desk multiple times. Multiple times in my life. Like, every once in a while, I get that moment where I'm like, I, I don't like the way things are. There's something that can be optimized here, and I will completely redo everything, which I'm going to have to do when we move in about, um, a month and a half -ish? Less than a month and a half? Less than a month and a half, I think. I love the Christmas cookie bin holding a monitor. Yeah, yeah, that is that. That's the, that's this monitor. That's over there. That's the other monitor. <laughs> I uh, I repurpose things. Usually, usually I'm the kind of person who would put that and like keep something in that, like um, I don't know other stuff that may be useful to have on stream so I can access it easily. But uh, no, 
It's totally empty. Actually, here's the sound that it makes when you tap it. It's totally empty. And that's because, like previously, I think I used, I don't know if I have any more of them. I'm pretty sure I threw them out, but I made some origami um, boxes out of playing cards, out of like a, a deck of playing cards. And um, I made them into boxes and I stacked the boxes on top of each other and interwove them. And then I was able to store, I was able to hold the monitor up there for a while. Um, I think the luckiest thing that I have here, grandma's upset if you aren't so into, for you, I'm not using it for sewing supplies. Well, grandma's just gonna have to wait on that. And I caught one of my stitches. That is so annoying. I like, if I had more time to plan what was going on today, I probably would have tried to figure out an angle for the sewing stuff so we could all see it very well. But honestly, I could not be bothered with it tonight. This is, this is all we're getting. So uh, if anybody's interested in that, feel free to drop a comment. Feel free to say something. Feel free to just say it out loud, knowing that I won't hear you because I can't hear your voice. That's okay. I'm content. I am too. Oh, hi there, golden cookie. Hi there. Yes, lots of good cookies. So I'm gonna get into a state of flow here for a moment while I do this stitch that's running, um, do this running stitch here and hopefully try not to get, um, hopefully try not to get confused. Oh, random question. Well, random answer. Domstar asks, in your opinion, who is the boss in your home? Oh, see, I'm the one who wears the pants in this relationship with my fiance's permission. So hopefully that provides an accurate uh, representation of the question. Dom says his aunt is the boss of the home at the moment. Ooh. Has that always been the case, or is this like a new, like a new thing? Because I know for a while, like I'm not new to the idea of like family members like moving in for a little while and sticking around. I think my grandfather lived with my parents for a while. Um, when I was a young boy, he was crucial in my early, uh, early development, including my spiritual development at the time when I was raised Catholic, which faded off as time went on. But you know, there's always the time for a, there's always time for being reborn, I suppose. I wouldn't totally dismiss the idea. I'd have to have a moment. I think I'd have to become a mo I'd have to have quite the moment to become spiritual. Ah, Dams lives with the aunt's family, so naturally, the leader of the house, if it's the aunt's family. The aunt would be the one wearing the pants, I would think. I guess technically, I live with my... If to put it in that perspective, I think I live with my mother's family. Because I think my mother wears the pants. With with no... Then there's nothing bad... There's nothing bad against that. I don't think that is anything bad related to my father as a person or anything like that. It just... I think my mother is the more outspoken one, for better or for worse. And I would think that if anybody had to describe who wears the pants, I would think it would probably be my mother. And I have gotten one of my stitches all tied up. That's unfortunate. Hopefully in two years, Dom will be able to move out and be married by that point. Ooh, that can happen in two years. Maybe by that point, you'll have a wife, you'll have kids, you'll have a home, perhaps a stable source of income in the six-figure salary range. Perhaps you'll be shaking your fist at the government for taking all the money from, away from you, from the taxes and whatnot. The world could be yours all in the next two years. Or, um, or maybe the world will, like, explode. I don't know. Something about global warming. I know bombs are pretty hot. Bombs explode. Technically, the Earth is really, really hot on the inside. But aren't we all pretty hot on the inside? 98.6? 98.6 degrees? It's pretty freaking hot, dude. You ever watch Attack on Titan? When the Titans get hurt, they, like, they straight up smoke. It's because they're so freaking hot. They're giant-ass creatures. Of course they're gonna be steaming hot on the inside. Dom's arresting 99 degrees. I, you know what? This is a chill stream. I'm gonna go take my measurement. I have measurement devices in my home. I have many of them. Let's do it live. Fuck it, we'll do it live. I'm gonna take my temperature on camera. Brought to you by Stell Life Incorporated. The one who makes my hub that collects my measurements. Would you like to see a live demo? Of course you do. Here, allow me to demonstrate a, a live demo for you on behalf of Stell Life Inc. This is my thermometer. My thermometer. My hub is plugged in on the corner of the room. I'm going to take my thermometer, turn it on, and put it in my mouth. And before your very eyes, I'm going to receive a text message saying what my temperature is. I won't even have to look at this. Observe.
Oh, I aired it. I took it out too soon. Hi. What is wrong with you, you stupid thermometer? You literally never give me problems. I'm going to turn it off and on again. When in doubt, turn it off and on again. Let's try it again. I look like I'm smoking a pipe. I might as well be. Anna doesn't like the smell of that stuff, though. Say, welcome to Kidman's log cabin. Alright, it made the dinghy. That means it's probably sending. The blue light on my hub is probably blinking. But observe, here comes a text message. Wait, wait, there it is. Aha! There it is! Thanks, Still. You're pretty cool. What's going on, Vio? I hope your day, or night, or evening is going wonderfully. I just took my temperature, and apparently, I'm a hot 99.5 degrees right now. So that's pretty cool. Oh, golden cookie. Let's click on that. Frenzy mode. Oh, actually. <laughs> actually, what I think I should do is, so. This is how I play cookie clicker. I don't necessarily click the cookie. Instead, I utilize Windows mouse keys. When I click this button and turn the mouse keys on, I can click and hold on my numpad on my keyboard. Wait, wait for it. On the numpad. Oh, Vio. What a dear. Thank you. Three months, bish, bish, you got me. Long story short, if you hold zero and five on the, if you hold zero and five on your keyboard, with mouse keys on on windows it'll automatically click for you profusely and i will set up a means to do that easily in a moment but first i'll put on my party hat because we've earned it and we appreciate that it's a green one i hope green's okay i hope it's okay i think green is a lovely color and it's a beautiful day for it too it's it's, it's night i don't know what i'm talking about it's a beautiful evening for it it's going good yours if i'm speak if i'm speaking perfectly candidly i think i'm a little burnt out from life in general I think life is life life is a little hectic not in a bad way like it's not like anything crazy is happening or anything like nothing nothing catastrophic i mean anna's got a bit of a toothache right now but that's not really like catastrophic not for me at least which i guess technically sounds a little insensitive but but to be honest I, we're, we're, it's all support we're gonna take her for we're gonna take her for treatment on wednesday because that was the soonest that they can get her in where are my little bits and baubles I use little bits and bobbles and put them on my keyboard in order for me to put the put my mouse on my keyboard and then keep things weighted on the keys. See, what I do is I use my mouse and I put my mouse on my keyboard, but I have these two little bits of plastic that I put on the keyboard so that the zero and five keys stay down. And I don't know where my little bits and bobbles are. My desk is a mess. I can't find them. Where are they? It's not below my water or my currently unopened beer. It's not below my embroidery bag. It's not below the alcohol book. It's not below the 3D printed stuff. It's not around the cocktail. But where the hell are these things? Oh, are they oh, near my microphone? Wow, I literally have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea where these things went. Wow. I lit it was so perfect too. I had I had a little port cover and I had a little uh, seven segment display. That's okay. I can just I can just hold my fingers on the keyboard manually, I guess, until I find them. Yeah. Toothaches are bad. I hope Anna feels better soon as well. Anna, so... I don't know. Anna, do you give me permission to share what's been going on? Oh, okay. She's going for it, so I'm gonna let her go for it. Dom says when, when he used to get like that and had a partner, the thing that helped him the most was going on a date with your significant other. Yeah. I get that. It was actually super nice. So, for those of you who don't know, Anna and I went on our first date on uh, uh, on January or on, whoa June thirteenth. So we just had our eight year anniversary, which was pretty awesome. And the toothache stuff kind of got in the way a little bit. It wasn't really that f it wasn't really that fun for Anna, and I know that she was in a lot of pain for it. But on the bright side, with all the driving around and going out and coming home early to check up on her and making sure that she's okay, I think this is the most time that we've spent with each other in the past year, like since we moved in together because school stuff was going on and I started my job and it was actually super nice. And I, honestly, I wouldn't have it any other way. You And we also went to the front, we went to, to the art museum too. I've, in my five to six years of living here in Philadelphia, I have never gone to the art museum and I went to the art museum for the first time. And it was cool. I took a few photos, I took quite a few photos and I, I'm still trying to look for these little port covers and I can't find them. I am, oh my God. 
They were literally right behind my keyboard. So, this is the- oh, wait. <laughs> this is what goes on the 5 key, and this goes on the 0 key. And if, if I put them down, and I place my mouse in just the right location, let me put it over the key cookie. Nope, I gotta do it again. Look, Ma! <laughs> no hands! Auto clickers! It's great! And now I can worry about other things. And the best part is, I can still move my mouse around. So if a cookie appears, like this, I just go over, and I do that. It's great. It's wonderful. I love that. Oh, also, I should spawn another cookie with my special wizard powers. Promising fate. Where's the cookie at? Where you at, cookie? Where are you, cookie? There you is. Cookie storm. Oh my god, there's so many cookies. Hopefully I don't kill anything. I don't want to accidentally click on all my plants, or else that would be catastrophic. Also, I think everything is probably glitching out right now. My goodness. My goodness. Alright, alright. That is a lot of cookie storms. Wow. I also have plants that are running right now that actually make the cookies last longer, so... Oh goodness, what did I get miss? Well, Anna grinds her teeth. Yeah. Have you thought about getting a mouth guard? Yeah. It's so cute. At least there was a silver lining, indeed. Vio and their boyfriend are thinking about visiting some family in Philadelphia next year, hopefully. Oh my god! We'll be here! I'm not planning on leaving Philadelphia anytime soon, and I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, but, uh, we'll see. Hopefully my startup is still around by then, which I have absolutely no worries about, obviously. Um, but yeah. Recommend the Franklin Institute, definitely. The Franklin Institute is, uh, actually a little, little tidbit of information there. I don't know if I've announced that yet, but Anna and I picked the wedding venue, and that's where it's gonna be. On, on the day, uh, <laughs> in the, in the year 2024, in the cool months of January, Anna and I will be getting married. Uh, actually at the church down the street, but the reception will be at the Franklin Institute. Oh, by the way, cookie. Mmm. It's from Insomnia Cookies. If you're familiar, then you know what's up. If you're not familiar, now you know. January, you say? Indeed, there's about a year and a half or so from them. Details will become available at some point to the privy parties. January is a great month. I think it's a cold month. I will admit. Speaking honestly, January is cold. It's very cold. The snow is cold. Philadelphia is cold, especially in January. But luckily, every, all the festivities are happening inside, so it doesn't really matter. You know the exact day and month by chance? It will be January 13th, 2024. It will be the date, of our, the date of our wedding. And I think for the purposes of just like... The person, uh, I think for the purposes of keeping things just slightly private, and because we still need to plan out all the details and whatnot, the Franklin Institute I'll keep public, but I'm not going to share exactly which church it'll be at. That'll be, that'll be our little secret. That's three days after your birthday. Oh, no kidding! Oh, your birthday's January 10th? I feel like I knew that. I feel like, I feel like I knew that. Did, it, did I pop a balloon for you on your birthday? Because I feel like I did. If there's anybody that I'd be popping balloons for on your on birthdays, it would probably be for Dominic. I'm pretty sure I did. And if I didn't, well... And that's 10 before your birthday! Oh my god! That's why everybody loves January so much! Oh my goodness. Well, hopefully... I was gonna say... Somebody should remind me. Well... I'll write it down somewhere. Where's my journal? Where's my book? Where's my book at? Bookie. Look! I think it fell down to the side of my desk. Oh, no. Ow! I whacked my party hat in the middle of the wall. Ow! Ow! <laughs> I literally just rammed my head into the wall trying to find my notebook. Everything's a mess! I don't know! I'm gonna lose it. Do me a favor, y'all. Remind me at another date. Remind me after I move in like a month or so, because then I promise, I promise, crossing my fingers, that probably. I'll cap my shit together. It's great. January is a very celebratory month. You know, great things happen in January. Um, if I do the math right... No, I didn't do the math right. I was gonna say... I was probably conceived in March, because my birthday's in November. January is still a great month, though. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. It's just cold. It's New Year's. That's when New Year's happens. It's a great thing. The girl that Dom's talking with right now, her birthday is ten days after his. My fiance's birthday is many months after mine. I don't think there's any pretty number to attach to it. What's interesting though, a little tidbit there is, oddly enough, Anna's birthday is the same birthday as her sister. 
Except multiple years apart. They're not twins or anything. Oh, hello, Cookie. Boop. January is a big day for some people. Oh, absolutely. I think... I'm trying to think what happened in January. No! I can just go through my photos. The reason why I take photos a bunch now is because I don't remember things very well. I don't remember what happens in certain months of the year. So I'm going to go back and try to figure out what I was doing in January. If I just search January Google, Google Photos. January. What happened in January, Google? No, 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 Google, don't, don't say anything. Hey, Google, stop. Just in case. Okay. All right. No, no, no. Okay. Apparently. All right, let's, let's do big screen on this. Oh, that wasn't the right number. Oh, come on. Uh, there we go. I made quiche in January. I think I made quiche. Yeah, that's my quiche. I made that quiche. I made quiche in January. Um, we found this really disturbing shirt of Mickey Mouse at the Disney store in New York. Oh, so we went to New York. Oh, Anna and I went to go see Winnie the Pooh the musical. They did that last January. I remember that now. That was such a cute little show. It was it was actually really cool. It was all it was all puppets. Every single every single uh, character from Winnie the Pooh was was puppets. It was so cool, and they were like full body puppets too. Like they're big big things. Dom says, uh, "Oh, Vio is saying a bit but a funny way of saying that they're twins. Same birthday, but yeah, it would have been. My uncle shares a birthday with." There's with your sister and his death date is your dad's birthday. Something about that seems ominous. But here's a random question. Do I ever skip breakfast? If so, how often and why? I try not to. But earlier on early on in my life, I would always skip breakfast. I always did. The reason why I started not skipping breakfast was because what wound up happening was I began to get really, really hungry at school. And I don't want to get hungry at school. And so I eventually started eating lunch. Oh, come on. Come on, auto click. Come back, auto click. Come on. There we go. Um, but yeah. Oh, excuse me. You send me a picture of you eating peanut butter toast pretty much every morning. I'm getting there. But for the longest time, I did not eat breakfast. I never ate breakfast. Eventually, I realized that I am a much sadder person if I don't eat food in the morning. And as it turns out, what wound up happening and this is a, just a reminder. This is a safe space, everybody. You can share whatever you want to. Nobody's going to put you down for it. If you use racial slurs and other questionable language, we might have to have a word. But for the most part, common sense. But stay safe. I started eating breakfast in middle school for the most part because I would go to school with no food in my stomach and I would have hungry farts. I would, for some reason, on the days when I didn't eat food in the morning, I would be really, really gassy. And so I started having breakfast. I started having cereal in the morning. And somehow, counterintuitively, that totally fixed things. And I, I, I don't know how. It was pretty wild. Also, for some reason, it seems that my auto-clicking ability seems to disappear after a while. I wonder if my computer's glitching out. I'm gonna have to keep watching that. I'm, I'll admit, I'm not fully paying attention to anything in particular today. I have the embroidery stuff, which I seem to have missed. Oh, no, no, I found it. It's over here. It's over here. It's great. Dude, Dom totally feels this, but would burp instead. Yeah, so like, eventually I started eating breakfast and like, that was like sparing, I guess. I, I didn't do that consistently since middle school, high school and college and stuff. But in recent days, I don't like the feeling of being hungry at work. I don't like it. So literally, I eat toast pretty much every single morning. My breakfast of choice, is toast in the morning. I, I love toast. I think it's very versatile. You can get different types, types of bread. You can put different types of spread on it. You can do peanut butter. You can do jelly. You can do butter. You can put pretty much anything on toast. For a while, I did avocado toast because I was like, yo, avocado toast must be a nutritious thing to have in the morning, right? And it was for a long, long time. And I did usually do that. Oh, Dom loves egg sandwiches. Oh, egg on toast. Oh my goodness. I, one time, uh, during my stressful college years, I I don't know what came over me, but I was like, I think it was a weekend. I think I was working on a shit ton of stuff. I was really trying to really trying to get my hustle on, and I decided that the best way to start the day was going to be with egg sandwich. I didn't. I usually didn't pack eggs. Literally in college, when I was living on my budget, it would be peanut butter and jelly sandwiches all the time. It would be nothing more 
than peanut butter and jelly sandwiches every single day of the week. For dinner, I would have soup from a can because it was cheap, affordable, and you can get it on clearance. And I would, I would have peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for lunch and for breakfast. Uh, but today, that day, I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to go to the store. I'm going to buy myself some eggs because I just want a damn egg sandwich. And my God, with the, with the dwindling flame of my fraternity stove, that kitchen is a piece of shit. They were supposed to replace it. They never did. I don't live there anymore. So RIP for the boys who still are. But I used what little fire there was to be able to make myself that egg sandwich. And I put, it was just a little bit of toast. Actually, I don't even think I toasted the bread. But those eggs, a little bit of American cheese in there, a little bit of salt. I don't think I used milk in it. I didn't learn that trick till later to make the eggs fluffy. But, oh my god, that totally hit the spot. I like, I have a hard time remembering certain things. But my god, I'd be, I can't not remember that egg sandwich. I don't even know what I was doing that day. Aside from, I know that I was working on schoolwork. But, oh my goodness. It was, it was heavenly. It was divine. I needed it. I needed it in my life. And it really hit the spot at the time. Dom says that he legit threw up, uh, throw up when you eat soup. Really? Is it like the texture? I would think it would be the texture of this. I mean, I guess the idea of like, for example, if we're talking like chicken noodle soup or like split pea soup with bacon and cheddar, which somebody brought a bunch to work one day of the, uh, the bacon and cheddar stuff to work uh, because they got the wrong soup and nobody ate it. It just sat there. It was unfortunate. But, um... Ugh, what else happened? I like soup. But I would think the idea of, like, watery meat in a can, I feel like would off-put many people. And and to that, I would agree. And especially when it comes to split pea soup with ham and bacon. Um, yeah. Oh, oh also, it was condensed. So there was literally no water in it. I, I could flip the can. I could completely invert this can, and nothing would come out of it. Nothing at all. And it was weird, and it made a weird gushy sound like like when you slapped it with a spoon it was unfortunate to say the least and not very tasty very salty too it's a psychological thing now oh, i believe it i think for the longest time once upon a time i was outside of my parents house and uh i was just kind of walking around it was springtime or maybe it was summer i don't really know the bugs the bees were chirping the bugs were buzzing and I found a cicada on the sidewalk in front of my parents' house. Although, the problem is, I didn't find the cicada until after I stepped on it. And it made a crunching sound, and I was like, Oh! Oh no! Oh yo! Yo, what's up, Pure Portal? What's going on, Pure? Oh my goodness, hello with the sub. Popping in. I'm gonna put on the shiny blue one. Because I want shiny blue. I want a shiny blue party hat right now. Wow! It's Dom's cousin! Lo and behold! Welcome. Welcome back, I suppose. It's been two months now. You've done this for two months? You're so kind. You're so nice. Y'all are so nice to me. I don't deserve this. I don't need it either. I have a paying job. But uh, I will say, as I, I think I put it in the... I hope I accurately reflect it in the about section below, but any of the subs and any of the bits and all that stuff, like, it goes back into the stream. Like, I don't... I'm, I'm not that good at budgeting. I'm really not. But... What I do know that I try to do is, and it goes instantly, I have, I have a, <laughs> I have a PNC student account still. So there's a checking account, a savings account, and an intermediate account. And so all the Twitch stuff goes in the intermediate account. Nothing else goes in there. So I only spend that on things relating to the stream. Like liquor, like liquor for the, the cocktails and buying bits for myself when Amazon decides it wants to take money from me and offer me additional benefit. It's great. Oh, and uh, I forgot to read the long message from Dom. He took so much time to type it up, so I must sell it. Back when Dom was a missionary in Arizona, they biked everywhere, and summers were terrible, and members, bless them, would feed us, but they sometimes fed the soup, and it would make Dom sick. It's unfortunate. Any idea what you'll do for your next cocktail stream? I don't. I have no idea. <laughs> but that's on Wednesday, so we'll figure it out then. Um, going back to the cicada thing. For a while, I couldn't eat rice because the inside of a cicada's guts reminded me a lot, like terribly, of rice. 
and it scarred me for the longest time. I'm over it now because memories fade over time and some would say that time heals all wounds. I, I don't necessarily believe that, but time healed that wound and now I can more or less eat rice again. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just bought, let's let's try to figure out what I want to do for the cocktail stream. I got, I got texted a recipe the other day um, that seemed pretty cool. I think it was, it was texted by our good pal and friend. Oh, I gotta watch out where I put this thing. I have chocolate around my desk. I'm gonna put you to the side. All right, um, hold on a second. We're gonna see what's going on in the cookie clicker world. Also, I think I'm gonna drop the graphics a little bit because I think my computer is studying, starting her with it. We don't need that. We don't need that. I don't need fancy, fancy graphics. Oh, go to the stats. Options. Uh, uh, fancy graphics is off. Oh, that's fine. That's perfect. I think that's dandy. Back to here. I have a lot of cookies so far. Plenty of cookies. I want... I want the kitten specialists. I'll take the kitten special, please. So we'll wait on that for a little bit. And I'm gonna put my mouse back on my keyboard. We good? We are. Um, yeah, I actually... I went to the thrift store um, when we went to go see the Game Grub show. And... Here, I guess I'll, I'll, sh I'll, do, I'll do some show-offs. Um, this is what I got from the Game Grub show. I got, I bought a poster. I don't usually buy posters, but I bought a poster. It's our boy Danny and our boy Aaron, and it's signed, and I love it. And that's Philadelphia. That's that's where I am. That's what I got. I haven't yet put it up on my wall yet. I'm kind of waiting to put it up on my wall because like, there's a lot of, I, I'm, I'm moving soon, so. And also, you can kind of see the background, but we all got crowns depending on what team we were on. And luckily, I was on Sir Danny's side, which I was super happy about. I'll admit, I'm a not so grump kind of person. I'm a, I'm not a grump kind of guy. I'm a not so grump guy. Oh, but in any case, oh, hold on, hold on. Going back to this for a second. I also bought this book at the thrift store. I always, every single time I go to the thrift store, I'm looking for tripods, I'm looking for lights, I'm looking for cocktail books, I'm looking for board games, I'm looking for glasses. I bought a clear pint glass which should be easier for, uh, it should be a lot easier to actually see what goes into the cocktail shaker before you shake it up. And I also have a normal sized martini glass now. It's great. Have you made a Philadelphia cocktail before? As in like, like a themed cocktail for Philadelphia itself? I don't think so. I don't think I have specifically. Oh, and you know, I just noticed, I think my auto click goes away when I click, when I switch scenes. That's unfortunate. Well, oh, now I know that. I haven't made specifically a Philadelphia cocktail. I don't know off the top of my head of any cocktails that were invented in Philadelphia, but let's... Let's do a search. What is a Phil... What? Or maybe there's a search uh, cocktail out there called the Philadelphia. I honestly would not be surprised. Philadelphia cocktails? Do, 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 do. What cocktail is Philadelphia known for? A Liberty Bell. Apparently, Liberty Bell is a cocktail inspired philadelphia inspired signature cocktails philly happening the liberty bill feels a little pandery yes the liberty bill is here yes it's a tourist thing it, it happens i see that wow this computer is struggling <laughs> i can see my face jittering in the background we're working on it guys we're working on it okay other oh my phone is frozen okay that what is going on? Okay, I use cookies. I can't... Alright, I wouldn't recommend going to phillyhappeningmag.com because literally I can't do anything. Can I move? I can't move on the screen. Oh, now I can. <laughs> okay. Here are some cocktails. Philadelphia cocktails, apparently. Um, the cherry water ice. Cherry water ice is one part cherry vodka. I don't have any of that. Three parts Sprite. I got some of that. I also got a uh, splash of grenadine. I got that. Squeeze of lime, garnish with lime, maraschino cherries. All right. The Rocky and the Adrian. Um, oh, the Negroni, the Rocky? What? No, it's not. They're calling a Negroni a Rocky. That's not the Rocky. That's a Negroni. Call it right. Gee whiz. And the Negroni Spagliato, or they call the Adrian. I suppose. That's just sparkling wine, Campari, and vermouth. You just switch out the gin with sparkling wine instead for a... So I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Spagliato? Spagliato? I don't know. Liberty Bell cocktail uses two ounces of bourbon, one ounce of peach schnapps, a dash of apricot brandy, which I don't have. I don't have apricot brandy yet, but I can. I 
can get that. I could probably grab that. Campari and a lemon twist to garnish. It's not that bad. I don't think that bad. Camera over here roasting these things. Honestly, I could... I could see the Liberty Bell cocktail. Bourbon, schnapps, and apricot brandy. If I had apricot brandy, I'd make it right now. Uh, but I don't have anything... I don't have anything um, apricot flavored in my collection. I don't, unfortunately. Come on, Philly. Seriously, Philly. Get your shit together. Don't say that on the streets of Philadelphia. Somebody may... Somebody may look at you the wrong way and threaten you. I have been threatened on the streets of Philadelphia before. Multiple times. But I choose not to remember those. But yeah. I got this other book. It's called Drinks Without Liquor. So lo and behold, it's a, um... You guessed it. It's a mocktail book. And eventually, we'll make mocktail. Yeah, it's interesting. I guess my auto-clicking stops when I switch scenes, which is really annoying. Luckily, I just need to click the button again, and then uh, we should be good. Oh, I just noticed the uh, the wrinklers are back again. Well, I'm not into that. I want... Ah! I think so. I'm into revoking that pledge. Elder Covenant puts a permanent end at the cost of 5% of your CPS. That's fine. We can always bring it back if we want to. All right, cookie. All right, cookie. Call me a cookie. I see the cookie. Cookie. Oh, sweet. The clicker frenzy is the great one. It multiplies. Oh, an achievement. I love this. Yeah, they might get road rage and shoot you on the highway. I mean, to be fair, if I was driving on the highway and I was yelling loud enough for the people beside me to hear me cursing out Philly, I think I'm the one with road rage in that case. I don't think I should be speaking that loud. That's... That's a lot! Yeah, I try... I don't think I have... I'm not a big road ragey kind of person. Instead, I think I'm a very road... Road... Road comedian? I'm gonna call myself a road comedian, which probably doesn't make any sense. But I'm gonna provide some context around that. I'm the guy who, on the road, will not like, I'm like, I'm not gonna scream at people and whatnot, for the most part, unless I'm trying to make a joke to somebody in the car, like, ah, oh, like, oh, I can't believe you did that! How dare you switch lanes without putting your blinker on? Like, oh my god! But I'm not, like, actually angry about it. I'm just, like, loudly commenting about what's going on, is, is the way that I would have to describe it. Also, if anybody's curious about what the drink of choice is tonight, it is Samuel Smith's Organic Chocolate Stout. It tastes like chocolate. Kinda. It's definitely not a perfect representation of what I look forward to in a chocolate cookie or a Hershey bar. Which, to be perfectly honest, I'm not a big Hershey. I'm not a big Hershey fan. Hershey's okay. But like, I know Hershey can do better. Hershey can do better in a variety of ways. But, uh, you know. We all have our moments. Is it good though? It is good. It is good. I think I also have a bit of a... I try not to be a purist for things, but in this case, like, it does slightly bother me that it's actually just stout beer with chocolate flavoring in it. I don't think they actually use any sort of, like... I mean, I could be totally wrong about this. I could be very wrong. And if I am, I am sorry, Samuel Smith. I apologize. But I don't think they actually use any, like, like, a cocoa, like, husks or anything like that inside or as a part of the, um... Uh, the brewing process. I think it's added at some point. Um, but I guess that's technically the brewing process. It's, it's okay. I'm not gonna hold it against you personally, Samuel Smith. You can, you can, you can bet your, you can bet your bottom on that. I assure you. I assure you on that. But it's good. It's nice. It goes absolutely great with the chocolate cookie. It's great. There's a piece of hair on it. Probably my own. Hershey can do better, but won't. Nah. I mean... There is a certain benefit to companies like Hershey, McDonald's, who, for the most part, dare I say, have remained the same throughout all these years. Like, if you think about it, and not that I would know for sure, I haven't been around for that long, but I suppose a McDonald's burger or a Hershey bar probably tastes more or less the same since the last 40, 50 years. And like, I don't, I'll admit, Hershey bars are not terrible. They're not my favorite, but they're not terrible either. And there's a certain bit of merit in that. Or same thing for like the McDonald's cheeseburger. Like, honestly, it's sometimes nice to know that no matter where I go, I'm always gonna get the same experience. And I lost my reference. Hold on, found my reference again. 
Got it. I see you there. Nothing I have to worry about yet. What if the hair belonged to Anna instead? Eh, it's just keratin. Grows out of our bodies. I've eaten worse things that come out of bodies. Speaking candidly, this is a safe space. Yo! Your portal, has the wife finished with work yet? Yes. The wife is done with work. Well, I hope work was pleasant. Work for me was rather pleasant today. Work? At work, oftentimes, we tend to get sidetracked with conversations at lunch. Usually it is around a particular theme that sticks throughout the day, um, or things get brought up randomly. Today, or recently, we've been on a kick of nut jokes. And by nut jokes, I mean these nuts, ligma, sugma, sugandies. That's kind of been the things that we've been laughing about these days. So, my coworker turns to me and he says, Dien. As in these nuts. And I say, aha, bien. As in B, like the B emoji meme. And he was like, ah, bien. And then I was like, ah, bien gracias y too, because, like, that's Spanish. Um, I think that means. Very thank you. No. Bien gracias. Good thank you. And you. Good thank you. And you. Yes. Oh, wow. I have octillion cookies. Nice. That's the first time I've hit that in this playthrough. That's great. But so then I got thinking. So, DN stands for these nuts. But what does BN stand for? Bees nuts? Almost. Bee nut butter. Bees nuts. Bee nut butter. And bee nut butter is not a new thing in my life. Be I've been saying the phrase bee nut butter stylized as peanut butter for a long time you say it while breathing in instead of breathing out peanut butter peanut butter peanut butter peanut butter in any case and so i decided to we decided to google today whether or rather the idea was peanut butter i feel like implies that you actually put honey and peanut butter together so is that a marketable product? Is there a space in the market for honey peanut butter combo? And apparently they already did it in New Zealand. They also do it in California and they also do it in Vermont. So somebody had me beat. Oh my goodness. What is going on over here? She still hasn't sent the wedding photos that you were in. Oh, if you ask for them, she'll eventually get them to you. She will she though? I don't know. I don't know about that. Questionable face. I remember when that photo was taken. I was at a low point in my life. It looks like I was still wearing glasses. I was at a Walmart. I was sad. And so I decided to make myself feel better by finding the most... The most... The most elegant looking hat around. I was in the kids section. It was right in between the aisles for the... Red sparkly sunglasses that sport strawberry shortcake. As well as the... Um, the blue opaque watches that sport Sonic the Hedgehog. Or some version of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, yes. Um, and then I found that, and I think it's just a, it's a unicorn thing? It's like a, it's, it's sparkly. I didn't get it, though. Walmart can do that to you. It can. Life in general, too. I was taking my grad courses at the time. Oh, my God. I am a chronic overworker. I'm a chronic tryhard. I'm the person who does way too much and experiences burnout regularly. Um, I'm going through one of those phases now, I would think. Speaking candidly. Uh, I do a lot. Uh, the job has been stressful at times. Pleasant, though. Sing for us. Aw. I'll do that. You know? This is... Alright. This is something that I've always wanted to do on stream. And I've only heard rumors that I can. So, I have been told that Ninja Sex Party, sung by Daniel Avedon, allows their music to be played without any sort of copyright strikes and stuff. So, now that we're on the topic of it, I... I'm gonna play music from Ninja Sex Party. I will add, oh, I'm gonna add a song of theirs to the list. I love Ninja Sex Party. That is definitely one of the songs of my people. I love, I love Ninja Sex Party. All right, let me find, let me find the band. I gotta type it into Spotify. I have many of their like songs, but let's find a good one. I love to say, I literally, I was, this is the first, actually, come to think of it, I bike back from work most of the day, four out of five days a week. And I actually sang for the first time on my bike ride home today. It just, it was, it was that good feeling. I had a good song running. It went through my hair. It was great. Oh my God. I, I think one of my favorite songs by them is I Don't Know What We're Talking About. 
Goodbye. So that's what we're going to sing. That's what we're going to sing. I don't know what to talk about, and I haven't for a while. By Ninja Sex Party. Add it to the queue. Skip to it. Is it hot by you too? It is rather hot. I think it was like 80 degrees today. It was awesome. I loved it. I'm going to have the lyrics up in the background too because I forget things sometimes. I'm a cheater. Sue me. All right. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I need to turn off the cookie clicker sound. I need to turn off the cookie clicker sound. Cookie clicker, please. Maybe have a moment. Thank you, cookie clicker. All right. Picked you up at eight. Our heart was racing and now we're on our first date. You look so radiant as we walked into the restaurant. We start to talk and then I smile and nod. Whoops, wrong screen. Yep. You told me about your life. But I was lost inside your oceanic eyes. Our hands touched briefly as the light reflected off your golden hair. A strong electric charge was in the air. Now it's 10 o'clock and the meal is done, but the conversation's just begun. You're fascinating, I feel blessed. But I have to be honest, I don't know what we're talking about And I haven't for a while And I don't know what we're talking about And I haven't for a while now As I click on this cookie, excuse me My eyes are open wide You speak with passion But I'm panicking inside Cause I've been daydreaming About a pterodactyl named Lamar When he's tired of flying He drives a car He's got to get to work on time His nursing job is on the line His wife is always on his case Why can't she give Lamar some space? I don't know what we're talking about And I haven't for a while And I don't know what we're talking about and I haven't for a while now. Dun 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 dun. I'm pretty sure you're telling me about your new job. I'm not absorbing anything, smile and nod. I'm thinking about ladders. If I tell you, is that hot? Is it my turn to talk? You're looking at me. Oh God, focus. Focus, penguin in a costume. How many Draculas are hiding in this room? Marlon Brando was so very handsome in his prime. I'd make an awesome cop if I could stop committing crimes. I don't know what we're talking about. I'm totally lost. I don't know what we're talking about. I. Where am I? Don't know what we're talking about. And I haven't for a while. Am I the only one who cares about Lamar going back to night school? We're talking about, and I haven't for a while now. Dun 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 dun. Anyway, why don't you and I go back to my place tonight? Oh, I see you left at some point. In any case, that was I Don't Know What We're Talking About and I Haven't For A While by Ninja Sex Party. And now, back to your regularly scheduled Cameron, I suppose. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm gonna take a bite of this cookie. So satisfying. I freaking love NSP. I love NSP and I love Danny Sexbang so much, which is Daniel Avedon's stage name. All right, well now, now we've got that out of our system, at least for now. I think it's time to spend some cookies. 
I want kittens. They increase my they increase my milk. Whoa. They increase my cookies per second by like threefold. It's great. I can also buy the Obey upgrade, which allows my Cortex Bakers, which are create the artificial brains the size of planets, capable of simply dreaming up cookies into existence. Time and space are inconsequential. Reality is arbitrary, as we've always known. And we'll make those go better. Apparently, there's really no hard limit to how long these achievement names can be, and to be quite honest, I'm rather curious to see how far we can go. Adolphus W. Green, 1844 to 1917, started as the principal of the Groton School in 1864. By 1865, he became second assistant librarian at the New York Mercantile Library. From 1867 to 1869, he was promoted to full librarian. From 1869 to 1873, he worked for Everett Southman Southmade and Choate, a law firm co-founded by William M. Everett's Charles Ferdinand Southmaud and Whoa Cookies. And Hodges Choate, he was admitted to the New York State Bar Association in 1873. Anyway, how's your day been? My day's been pretty good so far. We talked about peanut butter at work, and honestly, I don't think I could be happier. Honestly. And now I really want to know whether or not it is feasible for me to very... I don't know if it's easy for me to combine honey and peanut butter together. I'm sure it's possible. I know it's possible. But do we want to experience it? Maybe one day. I feel like there's a there's a cocktail combination to be had there that I'm not fully privy to. Like maybe there's a peanut like a, there's a peanut honey cocktail recipe out there that would be beneficial to know about, but I don't know. I can't combine more of that. I can buy more of those. More idle verses. This is good. Fractal engines, peacemakers, the sum of its parts. I don't know how much time I've put into this game. How much time has I have I put into Cookie Clicker? 307 hours, as in it's been running in the background for a good 307 hours. I like, I like Cookie Clicker. Cookie Clicker is good. I like Cookie Clicker. I think I have played every single iteration of Cookie Clicker. I wouldn't say I'm a master at it or anything like that, but I genuinely enjoy the game and I decided to spend $5 on it to buy it on Steam for a third system. It's like, I feel like Cookie Clicker to me is like Skyrim to many people. You'll just keep buying it because you love the game so much. And I did. And I will. And I shall. If Cookie Clicker ever comes to VR, I'm getting it. I will. And I will stream it. And we will have a great time. I hope. Honestly, it couldn't not be a good time. In any case, we're back to the embroidery. The embroidery is the school crest of the Oran High School. Of the Oran High School. Of Oran High School where they have a host club starring some wacky fun characters that we know and love. Now, technically speaking, that's all I can say. Because special things are happening that honestly, which is, this, this is actually really cool. I literally cannot talk about it. I am under lawful obligation not to talk about it, which is great in a way, because it's, it provides some suspense, you know? You never know what's gonna happen. But, uh, if that didn't make things obvious... Yeah. I signed an NDA. I've signed many NDAs in my life, but... This one, excuse me, I'm the most shocked about in my life. Oh, excuse me. And that's where we'll end that there. But, uh, it'll be fun. I don't know when we get to talk about it. But I'm sure it'll come out soon enough. This is like, a within the past month thing. So, <laughs> cool stuff. Cool stuff indeed. I've never signed an NDA. Really? Interesting. I feel like I've definitely signed... Like, let's see. I guess in my in my career as an engineer so far, which technically encompasses the last three years because I've held, like, co-op positions and stuff like that, I've had to sign an NDA at least once or twice um, for my jobs. Technically, at my, current, at my current company, I only ever signed the one NDA for, like, my own work and whatnot. But, like... The company as a whole has signed multiple NDAs with a lot of like the, like for example, the device manufacturers that we work with. Honestly, what I wind up doing, and I do more and more of it these days, is I will send emails to um, device manufacturers who create Bluetooth devices that we want to work with. And over the course of signing the NDA, I get access to how it works and how to talk to it, which, um, I would be honest, speaking perfectly perfectly transparently, you could take most Bluetooth devices that are out there right off the shelf and 
using any sniffer app, a Bluetooth sniffer, you can Google it. You can get exactly what it's sending to you. And if you just know a little bit of math and a little bit of industry knowledge, which you can Google and watch YouTube videos on, and there's Discord servers about it all over the place. Why? How do I know that? Because I'm in them. Um, then you too can sniff Bluetooth out of the air and figure out how to hijack it. Um, it's it's a, it, for the, in terms of the hacking part of it, it can be a little difficult, but uh, I am um, I'm proud to say that I have most definitely reverse engineered people's apps on their phones to figure out how to get shit to work. I mean, but that's super needed for your job. It is. It absolutely is. Yeah, it's absolutely necessary. Otherwise, I don't think I'd be able to get anything to work because nobody would want to give me their details. And I'd be like, come on, dude, you want to give me all that number? You want to give me all the stuff? And they'll be like, no, we can't give you the protocol, man. You got to go through the process like everybody else. And I'm like, fine. I guess I'll wait then. It honestly, it's so bad though. It's, it's perfectly dandy. And honestly, I kind of enjoy that part. I think one of the things I mostly enjoy about my, my job is the programming aspect of it. And the fact that I get to like, I've always been interested in the challenge. I've always been interested in puzzles, and when you have to figure things out like that from either scratch or via a very bad reference, it's a, it's actually quite fun. It's a it's very entertaining. It provides that challenge that my brain so craves. My like um one of my worries going into the workforce was wondering whether or not like I was going to be properly challenged, and because I really like to push my brains and use it to do things. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't think my brain functions incredibly well, but I think it does work well, uh, well-er than some people, which uh, it's, uh, I, I like that. It's, it's good. It makes me feel like not just anybody can do the job, which is uh, it's fun. It's nice. Question from Dom. What's my favorite book? I haven't read a lot of books. However, let me, let me think about what, if I had to pick a favorite, what my favorite book would be. Um, let's see. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a wild gander that we mean like books that I've actually lit, read, like fiction or nonfiction or something like that. Uh, not these cocktail books. I would say my cocktail books are my favorite books, uh, but um, I don't know if that really counts there. Um, I have a favorite one of those though. It's the geeky cocktail book. I like that one. But I'd say a favorite book. I read a book series back in middle school called Escape from Furnace. I don't remember who writes the book, but it was a whole series. And I want to say it was about this kid who gets sent to prison for something he didn't do, I think. Um, and so it's about him attempting to escape from this prison that they call Furnace. And as the book series go on, you realize that for lack of a better, for lack of a better explanation, Furnace is not doing things very ethically to these children. Not at all. They are basically creating monsters down there through some really wacky-ass science experiments. And although I don't remember too much about the details of the book or the imagery and whatnot, but it was a dark fictional book and I liked it. Is the as the author Alexander Gordon Smith? Maybe? I don't record I don't remember, honestly. Uh, but it was called Something Escape from Furnace. And uh, I liked it. It was a good book, good book series. I like that very much. And I think, I don't know if I read the entire series, but I know at least got partway through it. And I think I also read another book that I remember reading in middle school was called The Compound. And that one was about um, a family that lives inside of this fallout shelter um, because the world has ended outside. And it's about them living as a family. And well, it's not as simple. It's not as happy-go-lucky family time as you may think. Uh, because there's... Well, I guess you can just find it. Unless I, I, can, I can spoil it. No, I'm gonna spoil it. The book's been out for years. So essentially, as it turns out, the world hasn't ended. The father is this psycho crazy maniac who decided, I'm gonna live with my family forever. They're never going to leave me. So I'm gonna lock all... I'm gonna trick my family into thinking the world is ending and lock us all into a, a fallout shelter. And then it becomes about the family trying to escape the fallout shelter without the father knowing. It was wild. I really, really, I really like dark book series like that. Um, I also, let's see, what are other, what are other books that I've read in my life? I'm not a big bookworm, so like, so like, I don't really have too much to say on it, but... I also read, 
Um, I've read at least one Charles Dickens book in my lifetime. Uh, not the one in high school. I actually read one in college called Our Mutual Friend. And I don't quite know how to succinctly state what that's about in a single sentence. But it's about a bunch of people interacting with each other through various social circles. Um, through various mutual friends. Our mutual friend. Which I think the mutual friend was actually a particular character in the book, but who is it? I don't know. I don't remember. There are a lot of characters in Charles Dickens' book, but it was a, a delightful book. And I took it as a part of one of my honors classes, and uh, it was a really chill class. She's just like, you don't have to pass tests or anything. Just come in and write about it. Just read the book. I just want you to read a book. And I was like, thanks, dude. It was great. Uh, but yeah, the last the last full book series that Dom read was Invincible. Oh, like the comic book series? I loved the show. I think I found, I'm pretty sure I found the entire um, Invincible like series book thing, comic visual novel, I don't know, inside of a game store. And I was slipping through it and I like, it, it was, <laughs> I was like trying not to spoil things for myself, but I inevitably did because I think the book series goes farther than the show ever did. And so I saw like, I saw, I straight up saw like, aliens and whatnot from other planets and whatever and i was like yo <laughs> i shouldn't be reading this if i don't want spoilers and so uh i stopped reading it i went on with my life i did not buy it but uh i'm also not i'm like i'm just not huge in the books i don't know why i've always wanted to get into it but pure's uh whoa pure's book was aragon that series the only book series that they ever finished i mean i think down were you talking about aragon the other day that's about the dragons and stuff or they're like dragon tamers and stuff like that. And apparently there's not that many dragons, but we got some. We got some dragons in there. I just remember... I remember seeing it at... Um, I remember seeing the Aragon books in my school's library. I remember pretty much... I had a lot of... I think I've had a lot of friends throughout my life. And through many, pe through many people, I have seen just the Aragon books in their houses. A past... I, I think a past girlfriend of mine had all the books... I think um, a buddy of mine who I went to college with has all the books. There was at least one other person from high school who I know also had all the books, although I can't quite remember who that was. But I've seen the Aragon series pop up a lot. A lot in my life. And I've never read them. But one day, I hope, I hope that one day when I have more time on my hands, which maybe I'll never get, I hope to read books. Maybe I'll read books on stream one day. I've been told I have a pretty nice voice. Eh, maybe. maybe. We could be into that. Maybe. Even if you read the books, they are doing things differently. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, maybe one day I'll be able to get myself to that point to do it. Honestly, that's like, that's like the whole, ba the whole backstory of like the reason why I even like started streaming in the first place was because I feel that when there's a camera on, that it gives me motivation to do things that I wouldn't otherwise have the time to do. For example, like to play video games. I stopped playing video games in college and I started playing them more after college because I uh because I was like I'm gonna start streaming this because that way it's not just me telling myself I want to play games it's the world that can encourage me to play games because there's photo evidence of it and um well that's kind of the excuse of that's kind of the excuse of why I'm doing the um that's kind of why I'm doing um my embroidery stuff now it's a proper excuse it's great and I'm actually getting it's great I'm actually getting stuff done and I feel so happy about it if you can read the first Aragon book, you can read all of them. I mean, I can, I can definitely read a book. There's no doubt about that. I mean, maybe that's that's definitely not the reason why I haven't read a book in a while. Um, I actually am reading a book right now. Come to think of it, I say that is that. Have I been lying? I haven't been lying. I'm, I'm speaking honestly. But yeah, I actually have. I I've been reading a book recently. I'm not that far through it. Um, but it's called, I think, fifteen. 15 tenets or 15 things of conscious leadership and uh i think it's just about making the most of your life as a leader which i'm not a leader yet but i might be a leader one day so might as well preparing yourself prepare yourself early i suppose there's nothing wrong with self-improvement and self-help nothing wrong with it the first one is the hardest one to get through because it just kind of feels very dry oh okay okay so aragon's the dry one and the other one's not so much. Let's get myself a cookie. Promising fate. Nice! Like cookie. Come here, cookie. Lucky. Lucky! Oh, you know what I can do now? I can I can buy ten more Cortex Bakers. At this point, there is no real goal to this game. I just want the achievements. 
and eventually if I just keep clicking buttons, I will get more achievements. Look, more cookie. Excellent. Oh, I'm getting a lot of messages on my phone. What's up? Ooh. Interesting. I'm gonna have to check that out later. Just got a game recommendation. Has anybody out there ever heard of Gate Ruler? I haven't. So if you have context, inform me. I beg of you. What other buildings could I buy? I can probably buy about a ton of this stuff. I have septillion things. I can buy the sextillion stuff. The best leaders are the ones who understand they don't always have the best answers. Lord, I know for a fact that I don't always have the best answers. I, I actually, for the longest time, actually, that's something that I've kind of tackled uh, at this point in my life. And it's that a person who is in a leadership position or a person who is higher up on the hierarchy than you may not necessarily have your best interests at heart or may not necessarily know what the answer is. And just because they have more experience or have more time on their and experience on their resume or time in the job doesn't mean they actually know what's going on. And I don't say this with any sort of like mean intent. It's just kind of like a fact of life. Like I know some people in my life who are like, I am older than you or I, I am a certain, I am a a bit up the hierarchy from you, therefore I know better, or therefore I deserve your respect. And I mean, just like with anything, I think you have to earn respect and you have to earn the trust. It's the, tr it's the whole trust and respect part of it. Like I don't necessarily trust that what somebody above me is telling me because at least in my experience, time and time again, somebody will say one thing and I'm like, oh, is that true? And I'll go back and I'll check and I'll be like, oh, that's actually not right. But like, you know, that's a part of the process. We have to, you know, if we're honest with each other and we, in a constructive way, point out each other's flaws, mistakes, and rooms for improvement, then we'll all become better people one day. Or at least, that's the intent, I hope. And I'll become a better person one day when, um, when I absorb all the matter in the universe to create cookies. I will. But yeah, I, I totally agree with that. And I don't know if I'll ever be, I mean, I imagine I have a certain prediction of like where I'm gonna go in my life within the next few years or so and I have a feeling that I will be a leader in some regard um, whatever that means whether that means uh, a managerial thing an administrative thing a team leader project leader I don't really know or uh, I don't know I just I have I have that feeling and I, I definitely know I'm not ready for it now I think if, if I can offer my own two cents in that another aspect of a leader, I think, are the ones who are, um, in, in my opinion, I think the best leaders are the ones who are humble about it. The ones who are not necessarily totally outspoken. Like, you, you gotta have confidence. And I think that's a really important part of things. But like, personally, I'm not a fan of those, I'm not a fan of those leaders who, like, for, for, for lack of a better term, it's toxic like toxic leadership, like you're gonna do what I say and do it on time and do what you have to do because I told you to. And that's how we're gonna get this company running or that's how we're gonna get the project done. I don't like people like that because in my opinion, all that does is it creates a work environment that's stressful and unpleasant. Like I've seen at least one person close to me in my life. I think they experienced a, like, a work environment like that to the day that they retired and I, they're not broken or anything like that. But definitely cracked a little bit and very, very irritable sometimes. And I think took it out on people in their lives. And I I don't want to be like that one day. I don't. I just noticed they have a news broadcast about cookies. Oh, yeah. Oh, this stuff is hilarious. It's all up there. But Dom gets that there are deadlines that need to be hit. Uh, but there's ways to do it. Yo, Matt, I just unlocked a new type of milk. Is it strawberry milk? Oh, I swear to God. If it's strawberry milk, I love strawberry milk. What's the milk? Strawberry milk. That's my favorite kind of milk. Aside from chocolate, that is. But yeah. Oh yeah, it's great. And when you get more... So there's a lot that goes on in this game. Um, if we have any questions about what's going on, I can answer all of it, probably. Um, oh, what is going on? Oh, shoot. I just clicked on settings in OBS. I don't want to click randomly in OBS. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. There we go. Back to cookie clicker, please. There we go. I... Stream is still going. Sweet. Stream is still going. That's good. That's good. All right, back to... Back to that. All right, cool. Yes, strawberry, always. But there's ways to do it. There are absolutely ways to get deadlines done. Uh, I completely agree with that. Personally, I'm the kind of person where if I don't have deadlines, I have a hard time finishing things. I believe that. Chocolate milk is the best milk. Nani, what? Nah, I mean, chocolate milk is a close second. I just like, I have 
It definitely wouldn't be the first time that I described strawberry milk on stream. I love strawberry milk. It like Hershey's strawberry syrup in milk just brings me right back to my childhood. I love it. It's amazing. All right. Making progress. Making progress, making heckin' progress, making progress, making heckin' progress. Do some work and we're gonna get some progress. That we do it. Oh, cookie. Strawberry milk, though, sometimes just tastes off. I agree. I mean, I feel like because what I imagine is strawberry milk isn't necessarily what strawberry milk tastes like. The classic example, being, I'm talking about Hershey's strawberry uh, syrup in milk. And that's not necessarily the same strawberry milk experience that everybody gets. I will say... Oh, did I get chocolate in there? Oh, no. Oh, no, I got chocolate in my thing! Ah! I must have chocolate on myself. Oh, no. Oh, no! I got chocolate on my... <laughs> I got chocolate on my embroidery! But it's on the back, so I think it's okay. E, I got it. Wait, I got it. I got it. I got it. Still tastes good. It's okay. It's okay. Not the chocolate. The enemy <laughs> the enemy of my embroidery is the chocolate. I'm going to move that to the side so I don't mistake that again. Listen, make it a great point. But when it doesn't taste weird, it's incredible. I agree there. Now, I will say, if you're looking for the type of strawberry milk flavor that I'm referring to, if you've ever had a taro milkshake, it's like purple. I think they color it purple. I don't know if it's actually purple, but taro milkshakes, at least the ones that I get from the food trucks here in Philadelphia, taste almost exactly like what I imagine strawberry, Hershey's strawberry milk to taste like. And it's it's wonderful. And like it, it took me by surprise one day. I was like, oh, I've always wanted to try taro. And so I tried taro and was like, wow, this tastes like something I recognize. What is this? Oh my God, it tastes like strawberry milk from my childhood. And my coworker who was there with me was like, does it really? I was like, oh yeah, oh yeah. You gotta, you gotta do the strawberry, the Hershey's strawberry milk. And uh, nah, that's definitely what that tasted like. Oh, I did that slightly incorrect. I think we're okay. Also, with the strawberry, with the, oh, with the chocolate milk, you get to have the meme of being able to scream, CHOCOLATE! CHOCOLATE! Like from Spongebob. Classy. And everyone knows. Everybody knows what it's all about. Well, everyone with class, that is. It's true. Clickety split. Achievement unlocked. I've probably clicked way too many times, but let's get even more. We're back to Octillion Cookies. This is great. This is wonderful. We are making progress. See, this is what I've set up for myself here. I am a creature of habit. I am a creature of addiction. Not really. I'm actually not that easily addicted to things. But if there's one thing that I think my brain is hard hardwired towards more is progress. It's that feeling of achievement. It's that feeling of, I just did something and it's done and it's behind me. And now this is what I'm doing. I'm playing cookie clicker and getting achievements and making progress. I'm also working on the embroidery, which also feels like progress. It's a nonstop flood of serotonin to my brain. I feel great right now. I'm drink. I'm eating a chocolate cookie. I have my chocolate stout beer. I'm on top of the world, baby. And and to be perfectly honest, which is the way that I've been feeling these past couple of weeks, I needed this. So thank you all for joining me with it. I appreciate it. Because to be fair, it just wouldn't be the same without without the peoples around. Oh, love. Did you just say you're drinking a chocolate cookie? What's the alcohol content on this thing? What is the alcohol content on this thing? Why don't you say how much alcohol is in you? Bro? Bro? This doesn't say how much alcohol is in it. That's weird. Oh, oh, there it is. Five. Five percent alcohol. Mmm, cookie drink. Mm. Honestly, cookies can be whatever you want them to be. Cookies don't necessarily have to be in the solid state of matter. 
Tell me what it is. I'll Google it. It is organic. Samuel Smith's organic chocolate stout, which I now realize is in 5%. It's, it's 5%. It's right next to the, the, to the volume, but it's on the back of the container. Usually I find it on the front. It's good. I would, rec would definitely recommend. I would recommend that, indeed. All right, well, this clicking stuff has come to a slow and steady stop. Let me get out of those things. We'll go back over here, see what we can buy. Multiverse agents, like that. Cool. More clicking power, we enjoy that. Pink biscuits, we also enjoy that. But we could, it's 4%, that's 4%. We'll go with the 4%. Whole grain cookies. Miraculite mouse. Oh, beautiful. But I think I want to focus on buildings. What else more buildings can I get? More cortex bakers, like that. More idle verses. I have many septillions. Let's do the single digit septillions and see how where that gets us. Single digit, single digits. Ooh. Ooh. I love the feeling of goodness. I love the feeling of accomplishment. This is wonderful. I literally like basically my anticipation for usually what we do on Fridays is that or well, it's a Monday. <laughs> Usually what we do on Mondays, we'll do some indie games, you know, we'll try something new, we'll spend about an hour or so on it, and then we'll call it quits. But you know, today, this past weekend, I like, I was sitting, so, I, I was totally encumbered over the weekend. I was binging a game called Tribes of Midgard with my fiance Anna, and my, um, my, uh, best buddy Lycos Lore. And we played that game for like 12 hours this weekend. We were up to like 5 o'clock in the morning one night, and it was wonderful. Definitely the most hardcore game sesh that I've had in a while. And I was like, you know, I don't feel like playing a random game. I feel like playing a game that I've been playing, and I will continue playing it. So, would you give it a 5-star rating? 30 reviews all saying 5 stars. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's 5 stars. I think one of those reviews, at least on Steam, is mine. <laughs> and I, it better be a 5-star game, I think. Oh, at least, oh, that Steam doesn't do. It, Steam is up ups and downs. Yeah, I would say, I would most definitely say that, um, that it's, yeah, it's good. No, the drink. Nice, 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 nice. We appreciate that. I picked it up at Whole Foods. I picked it up mostly because it said organic chocolate, and I was like, oh, I want an organic chocolate ale. Make me feel better about myself. So, because I, because like, I don't want to get something that's like, like shitty or anything not really a bad for my body i don't want to do anything like that that's just be disrespectful this whole this whole everything that we got going on here oh when i give the drink uh <laughs> when i give the drink five stars nah i'd go solid four and a half and the reason i say that is it's that so it's bitter chocolate which i like it's not that forward on the chocolate and i'll admit if i'm gonna drink i'm not a big beer guy uh anyways and I like beers that are smoky. I like beers that are bitter and like fruit forward. Not like not like hard seltzer. I'm not really into hard seltzer. Although I can enjoy a white claw or a truly every um here or there. But I like things that are prominently fruity, but not like because you put fruit juice in it. Or prominently chocolatey, not because you put chocolate in it. So I I like there's a particular, I think if I had to pick one five-star beer out there, it would be this one that I got called Sticky, which I was only able to find at the beer store once, and I have not been able to find again. Um, it is always out of stock when I go, um, and they never have it at Whole Foods, unfortunately. Um, but overall, it's great. I like it. I don't know if I would get it again, because it's, it's good. It's nice, but like it's not like sticking around. But I enjoy it. I would recommend it. I'd give that a... I would recommend that to a friend who was asking. There you go. Septillion cookies. Let's upgrade our cortex brain matter, people. Boop. Nice. I said the forbidden drink, duh. He said the... Oh, the forbidden drink. Forbidden drink? Yeah, we don't talk about that drink. We don't talk about what drink? What did I say? I barely remember the things that I say on this show anyways. All right, don't stop the stream with your clicking abilities. Thank you, Cameron. Don't do that. What did I say? Did I say fruity drinks? Oh, I said Spike sel Hard Seltzer, didn't I? I did. Don't talk about that. Uh-oh. That drink? Oh, was it White Claw or Truly? Because if it's White Claw, then there are no laws when you're drinking the claws. One time, here's a story about White Claws. 
This is a story about White Claws. I went down south with a buddy of mine. Um, we drove down there with a couple other buddies of ours, and we decided that it would be a wonderful idea to get the weird, uh, the, the, to get the most inopportune options for the ride over. So, the first thing on our list, because we're not gonna have, we're not, we, we can buy a liquor down there, that's fine. But up here, we were gonna buy some beer. First, something a little nice. Nice white wheat beer, the Allagash. It's a good one. Allagash is a good one. And being that we had something good, we decided that we should also have something absolutely cursed. So we decided to buy White Claws. Now, no, no, no. You can't just pick one. If you're about to go all ham on the no laws thing with the claws, you gotta go all in. Not just one flavor, not just two flavors, but two entire variety packs encompassing all eight flavors of White Claws. And the goal was to be able to try every single flavor by the time that we got down south. And lo and behold, I was able to try every single flavor of White Claw, to my knowledge, that's to my knowledge, and that encompasses watermelon and black cherry and lime and lemon and there might have been a watermelon and oh my god, I don't even, I don't even know. If I had to pick a favorite, I went with the black cherry. I gotta say, I think the black cherry is the best. Best, <laughs> I did what y'all did, but I did it worse. Oh, I did all of them. I had to pick it. I had to. I had to pick. Actually, I think during that trip, I made a log of which ones I drank in what order and what their ratings were. So now, I have to go searching for them to find what my descriptions were of the white claws. If anybody's curious, I use Untapped for my beer stuff. It's an app. Dom's drank all of them and thought lime was the best. Ooh. That's valid. Lime is up there. Definitely like lime more than lemon, if I had to make a comparison there, at least I think. All right, where are my beers at? Sort by new to old. Where are the claws? Where are the claws? Going down the list. Where are them claws at? 79 beers on this list. Come on. Where are the claws? I know I have them on here. I'm pretty sure I did. There's no way that it's that far down the list. Oh, there we are. I found them. Okay. Okay. So, oh, never to drink it again, though. Just get sick smelling them. Yeah, they're not that good. If they're available, I will partake. But I'd rather, I'd honestly rather have a cocktail anyway. Okay. So, I think I have a, don't I have a review on this? I have a review. Okay. First one was mango. Three out of ten stars. Tastes like mango. That was my review. Then we tried watermelon. Watermelon was three out of five stars. Tastes like watermelon. Lemon was three out of five stars. Tastes like lemon. I'm apparently not, I apparently was not very creative with these. I feel like they get more creative as I go on because I get subsequently drunker because I drank the whole can. Um, tangerine, three out of five. Tastes like a tangerine right after you peel it, but not the flesh. Definitely more the peel for the tangerine white claw. Then we have the raspberry, three out of five stars. Tastes like raspberry, a very fake one, but mother... I think that's supposed to say nonetheless raspberry, but it says motherless raspberry. Uh, mo motherless razzy. <laughs> nonetheless razzy, <laughs> three out of five. Uh, natural lime, which I gave a three out of five. These are all three out of fives. I apparently like, eh, they're, they're meh. Tastes like lime and a refreshing citrus sugar beverage. And then we have ruby grapefruit, which I gave three out of five and said tastes quite literally like grapefruit. I do know what a grapefruit tastes like. And then finally was black cherry, which gets, oh, oh, 3.5 out of five. And my review is tastes like black cherry, truly the best of them all. Totally worth drinking all of the others just for this one. And that was... Does it actually say when I checked in on these things? January 1st, 2021. Oh my god, I did that on New Year's! Yeah, I did that! New Year's last year! Oh, insanely accurate. Grapefruit was insanely accurate. Seriously, though. It tastes like exactly like a grapefruit, if I recall. Now, I don't have any white claws on me. I don't have any for sure references right here. That's an idea, though. Cocktail stream where it's just chatting. We're just drinking all the white claws. There are no laws. You're just drinking the claws. 
Could be fun. I haven't done a purposely drunk stream in a while. I think the last time I did something like that was when I went through my Valhalla playthrough, and like, it was basically a drink every single night. That's a recipe for drunk disaster. Or drunk zaster. Drunk zaster? Zack? Drunk? Drunk? Zaster naster? Yeah, I dig that. Um, but yeah. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed those streams. Eventually I'll go back to that. Eventually I want to do more games that feature like, like, um, like a drink per night or a drink per this, that, or the other thing. Like, I can, I could be into that. But, uh, it's, it's a matter of planning. I need to plan it. I don't think you've done a drunk stream with me in chat. No, this was way before. It's been over a year now. One of my first series that I streamed, um, I played Hat in Time first, and then I started playing some, uh, Valhalla. That was when I first started doing the cocktail stuff on the show, actually. Um, I would do it right here, I think, behind the bar. And I think for a while, I actually had the double setup. That's not, like, a new thing that I figured out. That was something I've had for a while, but it's been a hot minute. But I haven't done something like that for over a year, so you're right about that. Excuse me. It's definitely been the hottest of minutes. I think the problem that- I think the one- one of the things that hold me back from doing stuff like that more often is the fact that I'm a little self-critical, and I- I think I hold myself to unrealistic standards. I'm like, oh, I have to have things planned out, or I need to make things, like, quick and easy to switch, and... I mean, all that aside, um, I think part of it is that I just have a certain personal level that I want to get to. And, like, what I'd rather do is- I think currently- I, I've been thinking about it more, and I think currently I have a problem that I'd like fixing in my- in my whole stream schedule thing. Um, the whole, um, feeling like you're kind of burning out thing, like, that's something that can be fixed by better managing my time. Um, it's a matter of figuring out how to better manage that time. One of the things that you could sacrifice is stream stuff, I guess, but I don't want to do that, because I have way too much fun with it. I certainly can't sacrifice work, because it's, it's work. If I sacrifice work that I don't get paid to do work, and I only have so much time that I can take off, um, in, in an honest manner, that is. Um, and then, so it's about, so really, what I have control over is, are the things that happen after work, in and around work. And that involves stream stuff. It involves the editing and the thumbnail stuff that come after it and whatnot, and when we figure things out. And also, like, the way that I wind up doing the the show and organizing the time. Sounds like you need more recreation. I could totally do Dude, this weekend, what I did, what, what we did was, my, my buddy Lyco Slur came up, uh, me, him, and my fiance Anna, we all hung out. We went, we went for, there was a little fair that was happening, uh, right in front of the art museum. We went up in the Ferris wheel, we got a nice dinner, we chatted for so long, we came back and we played video games until 5 in the morning. Woke back up at like, um, I don't know what time it was the next day. Um, it was later on, like 10, 11 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, went to the game store, got about, or played, played more games until 5 o'clock PM. Um, <laughs> played, uh, we went to a game store, stopped by for a little bit got some food, and then went to the Game Grumps concert, and then came back and played more games. We came back and we just played more. And then I went to work this morning feeling very, very tired, and my buddy left this morning, and I miss him like no end. I can't wait for Lego Slow to come back. But it was so... Oh my god, it was so nice. Usually what I really look forward to are like... They're slow weekends. They're weekends where nobody's telling me to do anything, Nobody's telling me to do anything except for me telling myself to do whatever it is that I want to do and that might involve a stream It could involve catching up on thumbnail work. It could involve making some worthwhile changes but uh usually Usually it doesn't get that usually it doesn't get that um, That fulfilling it's usually not that fulfilling um, But yet so like a lot of what I think I need more of is like that exactly what you said It's the it's the recreation part of it I need more things that I can just, like, sit down and fully, fully be into in the moment. Like, I think, me as a person, I find it rather difficult to be fully into um, any one particular thing that I'm doing. Eventually, what'll wind up happening is my attention span gets a little thinner. I think, oh, I could probably be doing something else right now, or, oh, I kind of just want to go home right now. Like, sometimes when I'm out with friends, 
I'm like, oh, hey, you know, it's getting a little late and I think I'd rather be home right now. But like, I don't want to skimp out on the social activity. So I'll just keep going and I'll just keep on doing what I'm doing. I mean, granted, I should probably train myself better to be like, to, to know that it's okay to say, hey, I think I'm done for the night. I'm heading out. Or, hey guys, do you want to do something else? But um, I'm not there yet. I'm a growing, I'm a growing individual, I would say. How do you feel about Ark? I've never actually played Ark. I've never played Ark before. I know it just became free on Steam, and I've owned it for the longest time. And I think, I think I downloaded it definitely over a year ago, telling myself that I was going to, telling myself that I was going to play this, and I never actually did. Would you? Would I play? I would totally play. It's a matter of finding the time for it. And I know, like, no, I feel, I feel the weirdest here saying this, feel the weirdest saying this here because I think Dom knows more than that. Like, I know more than anybody else that Dom has reached out to me multiple times in the past being like, hey, do you want to play, like, Dead by Daylight? And you can play games with us anytime that you want to. But, like, I guess it haven't, it hasn't, I haven't come to a point until literally just the other day where I was like, it's okay for me to stay up till, like, five in the morning to play a game. Granted, I wasn't going to work the next day. I only did that till two in the morning, but I don't do that very often. And I'm like very, I don't know what the term is, but I'm, I, it's reluctant. I'm like very reluctant to do that again because I worry that I'm gonna make some like world ending decision that I'm gonna go into work tired or I'm gonna regret it. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna regret it. I know that. And Dom's like, we have some friends who are gonna start playing it and we don't play mega late. I'm up, I, as, as I'll always say, and I know I'm flaky, and I know I'm not super good at basically saying yes to these things, but I would love to try, and I would love to, I'd love to be invited to it. And if I can, or if I will, it's not even if I can, I probably can. And if I'm being perfectly honest, it's if, if I do, because something in my brain will probably take over and say, oh, but I have to do dishes or I have to do laundry or whatever. I'm a very, I'm a very hard to try. I'm a very, I'm a person who's very, hard at trusting and it's it's got nothing to do with like the conventional sense of trust of like oh i don't trust a person i can't trust you it's a more like a i don't trust myself to trust somebody else and even still trust isn't even the right word either but to put that in perspective um my best buddy like us lore i've known him since high school and so sh should you roast your excuses oh by all means you are more than welcome to and like i think there I i'm usually pretty i haven't been in a in a bad state where like, I'll take it personally. I think I'm doing pretty good on that, but you're more than welcome to, hey, you could say anything here. I'm in a good mood right now. Let's roast it. But um, to put that in perspective, my best buddy, my best buddy, I've known him since high school. I've been hanging out with him since high school. And I would go to his house like almost every single, like almost every single day after school ended because my parents couldn't pick me up from school and I couldn't take the bus home because we had all these extracurriculars that we would do. And so Monday or Wednesday, I'd go after, I'd go to his house after school because of theater practice. Or Tuesday and Thursday, I'd go out to his house because marching band practice ended. And then on Fridays, we would just hang on Fridays anyway. So I'd pretty much just go to this boy's house every single day after school for a large portion of the time. And it took me literally two and a half years to finally get the uh, like feel the level of it's not even trust it's it's i think the feeling of imposing or the feeling of like not being welcome to be or be present in a certain way i don't know what it is i, I don't know what the words are but like to put it in perspective um his mom who's a wonderful person she comes up and visits us and she doesn't even live in the state anymore it's amazing and i love her to dear like she's my own mother um, but it took me two and a half years to finally feel, like, internally, to finally feel comfortable with saying, Hey, do you mind driving me home today? I mean, she knew. She knew that she was going to drive me home. And I knew that my mother wasn't going to pick me up and she'd be late for something and I had homework to do and I had to be home at some point. But, like, I didn't come to this personal level of... I guess getting past that reluctancy, for lack of a better term, where I felt totally comfortable to be like... Yo, uh, Mama Glenn, um, can you take me home tonight? Or you're driving me home tonight, right? And she'd always be like, absolutely. I love the drive and I love your company. And it's, it's great. And, uh, we call her, we call her Mama Smith now because 
that's essentially how she acts to us. She's like a second mother to me, and I'm so I'm so thankful to have her in my life. It's great. It's a hard thing to figure out. I yeah, and I feel like at some point in time, like I've been, I, I feel like oftentimes I kind of use, I kind of use stream as my own th makeshift therapy sessions, and I don't exactly know how conducive it is. I think for a while it was doing it for me, but I think I'm I think I'm getting, oh excuse me. I think I'm personally getting to the point where I think the things that I need to talk about are things that perhaps I shouldn't be sharing or things that I just don't feel comfortable sharing on stream. Like, really inner deep things that I'm not necessarily proud of them. And maybe it's because I'm not at a point where I feel like sharing it yet. Or maybe it's like personal information stuff that, you know, for the safety, for the, for the sanctity of safe security, maybe we don't want that out on the internet about, you know, my social security number, or credit cards, and the things I do in the shadows. Um, but I was thinking, I, I was thinking recently, like, I've been going through some times now, and I'm seriously considering, I, and I'm an incredibly flaky person, so who knows when this will ever be, but probably talking to, like, a professional just to, like, get my thoughts out. And honestly, it shouldn't be such a stigmatized thing. I know it's not. Anytime that I've had friends who are going through problems like that, I'm like, yo, you shouldn't feel bad to talk to somebody about it. Go, go, go get a therapist. Like, it's okay, man. But I am probably the biggest hypocrite that I know. I'm the one who's going to tell you, yo, you should probably save some money and, uh, you know, not buy that thing. Or actually, I'm an enabler in that regard, so I will tell you to buy that thing or I'll offer to pay for it myself. Um, but I'll be the one, the first person to say, yo, are you having problems? You should probably call 9 Like, you can call 911 to, to, like, to get yourself out of that situation or yo you should go to a therapist like right now um and i never do it i i haven't done it myself we're always our worst at it ironically oh t domstar's got a mama glenn nice uh and i agree are we are often our worst enemies and she's literally literally though man that that couldn't have said it any better than that i like and to be honest when it comes down to it like i feel like what i want to do it's a pressure. It's the pressure of doing something right. It's the pressure of not failing. It's the pressure of I need to be doing something and I need to be doing it right. And for a long time, for the longest time, I was like, going and talking to somebody isn't the right thing for me to do. I need to be, and I could come up with, just like Dom could be roasting my own excuses for not playing a video game a certain night with people who I guarantee would be happy to have me. I can give myself excuse after excuse after excuse of why I shouldn't be going. And let's let's pick some of the top ones that have gone through my mind. It's, oh, you don't need to afford a therapist right now. You're not like dying or anything. Insurance. Or I don't have enough time for a therapist. Literally, if that was the excuse, I could do telehealth visits. I stream to parts of the week. I can take another day out of the week to spend an hour or so talking to somebody. There shouldn't be an excuse there. And like, time after time after time. I will think of reasons to do it and then find a reason not to or convince myself that I don't need to. And it usually comes back to one of those three things. It's either I don't have enough money or I don't have enough time or that I just don't need it. And I don't think it comes down to a matter of need at that point. It's a matter of, I think, a particular philosophical mentality that I'm a fan of is utilitarianism. And utilitarianism is basically draw out the pros and cons. What are the cons of going to therapy? Well, I just roasted all of my excuses before. I can make time. It's easy for me to do so. I do have the money for it. It's insurance. It's needed in there. Um, yada, 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 so on and so forth. And the benefits would be probably more stability, probably feeling better about myself, maybe being able to help the people in my life better to handle their problems because I think I'm one of those, I, I think I'm one of those people that like, I, like, if you got, dude, if you got a problem, I have literally, and this is, this is to literally everybody, to the YouTube, to the Twitch, to the everywhere, I have absolutely no problem with t helping you talk through your problems. This here might not be the space for it, but my DMs are always open for stuff like that, and I am more than happy at least to have somebody to talk to. I'm totally okay with that. But, and again, I'm a hypocrite, because I don't talk to other people about my problems, but, you know, yeah, we're going back to that again, but, um, Dom says, I'm so glad you explained that because I had no idea what that word was. Utilitarianism. Oh, yes. It's the pros. It's basically taking the pros and cons. Essentially, you put the pros on one side and the cons on the other. And if you find that the pros outweigh the cons, then it's something you should do. As opposed to, like, for example, like um, other philosophies where that are based on, like, like 
I guess, emotion or social, like, social adequacy. This one's all about, it's all about the quote-unquote logic. It's, if it's good or bad, one side or the other, then you start to get into the questions of, like, well, what is good and what is bad, but that's the topic of other philosophical discussions that I don't think fall under the category of utilitarianism, but really, it depends on how far that your philosophers take it, and I'm sure there's many books out there on it. I don't know of any. I don't read books. <laughs> I've become more apt to watch YouTube videos these days. I think I'm a, I'm a lot better at watching YouTube videos nowadays than I was, but than I was previously. I'm, a, I'm very happy to go and, well, and now that I know my fiance watches YouTube videos on twice the speed, and my goodness, what a, what an opportunity watching videos on twice speed is, because it's all the content in twice the time, and, um, I can read faster than I can listen, so, uh, oh, I just, oh, whoops, I tangled my, tangled my threads up, whoopsie. I gotta undo that. Gotta watch those YouTube videos while you eat. I do actually. Actually, I did that this morning. My um, my boss will send me YouTube videos to watch, and so this time it was about how the startup. Uh, I think the startup world is kind of transforming right now. It's um, it's a time to. It, we're. I think we're moving into a bit of like a. I don't know. I'm not an, a financial analyst, so I'm not gonna be the one who calls it a recession. I think somebody else called it a recession, but essentially. Money's hard to come by these days when in the startup community, and so he sent me a video to watch it. He sent it to me weeks ago. I hadn't watched it yet, and so today was the day. I actually didn't eat my toast today. I ate breakfast at work. I brought my... <laughs> from my prideful cocktail, which was absolutely roasted on Reddit, by the way. People don't like that shit. It was gross, apparently. But it was cuddleful, so what the hell. Um, but... What was I saying? I brought my Fruity Pebbles to work and my oat milk. And so I've been... Uh, if I don't manage to get to the toast at home... I will eat the Fruity Pebbles at work when I get there. Um, and I think I may have saw my boss using that oat milk today. It's in the private fridge, buddy. That's my milk. You're more than welcome to use it. I will just buy more. And I will not say a thing. Because I am non-confrontational, but getting better. People on Reddit do be savages. Oh, and Spanish to all the time. Oh yeah, are, are you still getting Spanish ads? And on Spanish TikTok. Nice. I, um, yeah, it was great. So like, Quite literally, here's a review of how that went uh, with the with the cocktail. I don't usually post the cocktails on Reddit. I'm afraid of the internet community sometimes. Somehow, and I don't know why, I'm less afraid of Twitter than I am of Reddit, and I feel like that's backwards, but I was like, you know what? We got a pretty cocktail here. It's Pride Month. Maybe somebody will appreciate it. So I put it on up there, basically saying you put bourbon in, in cereal, and lo and behold, I think I kind of knew since the very beginning, like, this is probably not going to be most people's cups of tea. You barely can even call it a cocktail. But the first, <laughs> I, I shit you not, the comments in order were no, gross, basically why would you do this? And then I think once, one like, um, um, one like vaguely kind person who's like, yeah, I see what you're trying to go for there, but I think the milk's going to get soggy as a garnish, which you're right. You're absolutely right. It did get soggy as a garnish. But at least there was some help. There was some uh, attempted constructive criticism in there. And then somebody quickly responded to them and said, Oh, wait, you see what they were going for here? Well, I guess that makes one of us because I have no idea what the guy, this guy's trying to do with this cocktail. Not confrontational. I didn't respond to any comments. I just let them be. It's the internet. The internet exists in pleasant anonymity. I was okay with it. I mean, it did take a pretty big, uh, I, I think I took a pretty big ego hit that night, but by the next morning, I was like, yeah, you know, the world is sad. Reddit is savage. The world is savage. That's just how it's gonna be. I did get one helpful bit of criticism out of it, though, and that is milk plus cereal equals soggy. But I knew that already. Twitter is the horny, weird internet child. Reddit is the weird child that has an opinion about everything. Facebook is the boomer site now, and MySpace is just dead. It has gone all the way back around. Maybe MySpace will be revived one day. No way. It won't be. MySpace is not coming back. It will not. I don't think I ever used MySpace. I think the only exposure to MySpace that I ever had was my eldest cousin. He had a MySpace. I know he did. And I don't know if he still does. I'm guessing he might. I don't know why we would have gotten rid of it unless MySpace has privacy concerns these days, kind of like Facebook do. It's Facebook be Facebook be wild, man. Um, actually, Anna and I are considering of creating a cosplay Facebook page 
because there's a lot of uh, cosplay interested people who are in that. I don't want I don't want to insult people by using I don't want to insult people by using certain generational barriers or uh, age ranges, but I'm pretty sure if you are over the age of 35, 40, you probably have a Facebook if you use social media. And there's a lot of people who fall within that age range who are interested in cosplay and maybe interested in ours. Also, yeah, that's where I'll stop it there. But yeah, we have an Instagram, so it wouldn't be that difficult because the Insta you can just go from Instagram, just cross post it to the Facebook and it's not difficult to do. <laughs> Dom's dad has one. My dad has one. Actually, no, my mother has one and he she uses it in conjunction with my dad so they actually have a hyphenated name on Facebook, which apparently they've tried to tell them they can't do because Facebook is like, oh, you have to verify your identity and we don't think that you're a real person because you have two names hyphenated as well. You have two first names. That's not cool, man. Um, I don't think they ever got around to it because my, there is still um, a Charlie Robin Kelv out there on Facebook. So hi, mom. Hi, dad. Or both or neither. Who knows? <laughs> but um, I also have a Facebook, too. I don't really use it that often. I think oftentimes I'll cross post things from my personal Instagram on there. Maybe. I feel like there was a while when I first got into the stream stuff where I came to a point where I was like, all right, I sat down and I was like, I need to determine what the purpose is of all of my social media. I need to pay if I have a social media account, I need to figure out what purpose each of them serves. And actually, while I think about that for a moment, I'm gonna grab I'm gonna grab my piece of paper that dictates that because I'm pretty sure it's around here somewhere. Dom says I just looked at it and apparently music people use it a ton. Oh, for Facebook? Oh yeah. Ooh, I got a golden cookie. Nice. I only find it's in one of these folders somewhere. I have so much shit at this desk. It's it's insane. All right. Uh, here you are. There's my thing. Oh, for MySpace. Oh, people use MySpace still. Nice. I'd consider myself a musical person, not to the point that I needed to use MySpace, though. I think I'll just... If I honestly had to do music, I'd do TikTok, like my younger brother. He's a music... He's a music boy right now. Actually, it's super cool. It's super cool. My, um... So, I don't think... This is public information, so there's nothing... There's nothing wrong about it. But if any of you guys are really, 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 really into, like, the... Uh, I don't want to call it weird, but the, the abnormal bits of, of music out there, specifically polyrhythms and unique instruments, I would recommend finding, uh, I think, I, I think he might have changed it recently, but my brother Julian goes by Maroon of the Mountains, or I think, I think it's, I think it might be Julian of the Mountains now? I want to double check this, because I want to get the handles correctly, but this is my shameless pr plug for my younger brother who does music. He is, um, he's now busking. He's doing music on the streets, uh, up, up in Vermont. And I think, I don't think he could be happier. And it's so nice to be able to see my brother doing the things that he loves. And also to be able to see it as well. I follow his TikTok, I follow his Instagram, uh, I follow the YouTube as well. It's, it's great. And I'm trying to find the right handle. Where the heck are you? Where are you? Yo Sims Jeff, if you don't have TikTok, are you really on the internet? I was made fun of my boss, I was made fun of by my boss the other day because, because, because I have a TikTok and yes, uh, yes, because I have to listen to Cameron's on TikTok. Yeah, that's why Anna has TikTok. That's why. Where's my brother? I'm trying to find him on here. And for some reason, I must have scrolled right past him. How disrespectful of me. Uh, 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 this is going to take me a moment. I, I don't know where it is. About the Julie? Him? I am totally following him. What is going on? This is gonna take me a moment. Where the hell is he? There he is. Ah, Julian Trimba. He plays the Trimba. That's what it is. Dom sends me so many TikToks. He does. Honestly, the best part about receiving a TikTok from Dom is usually, usually what'll wind up happening is I will not get through the TikTok. I won't get through the TikTok he sends me. He will send me multiple and then I get to swipe through them and I'll have like this whole, it's, it's great. I feel so honored. Like I have this specially curated selection of TikToks for me to be able to just consume at a moment's notice. I don't, I don't actually use the TikTok that often. The TikTok, how old do I think I am? I don't use the TikTok that often. Um, but when I'm on there, I try to send things to folks as well. So if y'all got a TikTok and you want to send me shit, 
That's cool. I got a TikTok. It's on there. I I do things on there. I was gonna say funny things, but not necessarily the case. Wait, I wish to change my answer. I'm not on the internet. This is a go this is a ghost of the internet. The TikTok. The TikTok. He's got some good videos. So I've been told. <laughs> back to my list of my back to my list of my social medias. When I was originally trying to figure out how my social medias work, I made a little network graph, and I don't think there's anything... Yeah, there's nothing private on there. So, this is my social media graph. This is not necessarily up to date, but the social media graph, for me, says this. I have all these social medias, and probably more, and they need to be strategically attached to each other. There are some central hubs. As you can tell by the list here, my Discord has links to a lot of different areas. That's because if you're friends with me on Discord or in a channel, the idea is to be able to click on it and find all the other stuff. Now, some things have very sparse connections. For example, the li uh, the LinkedIn. Because if you are a professional, I don't necessarily want you to find all the personal stuff that I have on there. I think I've gotten a lot more interconnected over the past couple years, but I think my Twitch is on LinkedIn now too, which is great. Where is Snapchat? You bring up an excellent point. I do not know why there is not Snapchat on here. I don't think Snapchat connects to anything. I don't think I've put my Snap- like, linked my Snapchat anywhere. That's probably why it's not on that list in particular. But! I don't think- actually, is my Snapchat connect to anything? I don't know. I should probably add a social link to that somewhere. Didn't someone find your LinkedIn and watch your stream? So, actually, this is pretty awesome. I- I recently- so, I- I came to the conclusion every once in a while- Every once in a while, I go through the socials and I update things. I think it's- it's good to update things every once in a while. I like to keep things accurate, and honestly, it gives me that sweet serotonin that I that I so crave because it makes me feel like I'm making progress in my life, which I definitely am. But sometimes you just need that you just need that um that validation. It's like a genealogy chart. Yeah, <laughs> everybody knows that Twitter actually gave birth to uh, Twitch and Facebook. Duh. Um, but yeah, actually, this is this is wonderful. The other day, so I've been working. I've been working with a particular manu. I've been talking with a manufacturer, and I've been working with some of the things that they manufacture. And we've been going back and forth for a little while. Uh, for a little while. And so recently, I put my Twitch up on my LinkedIn because personally, I think of the three things that are on there, I work for Stell Life Inc. I freelance for Sparktoast LLC, and one could say that I also freelance for Twitch as well. I have made profits on any of those, and I think that I do them to a particular level of professionality. I think that warrants it on there. Plus, I think it's a part of my professional personality, personally. I think the firmware development and reverse engineering I do, that's on there. I think the thumbnail development and the editing and whatever the hell is going on here, I think there's a certain professional angle from that. And also, too, I just kind of do, I, I do voiceover stuff for Sparktoast now, and I used to do some of the more media stuff there. And, like, I think that's all proper angles of many different facets of my my personal and professional life, and so this manufacturer, uh, this uh, this manufacturer finds me on LinkedIn, sends me a connection request. All good, we connect. I'm like, yo, I've been chatting with you via email. We should totally connect, and I get a separate email a about a day later saying, yo, I saw your Twitch on your LinkedIn. What's your handle? We'd love to check you out. And I was like, this is in my work email. Well, I got my camera with an X on the internet. There we go. And so, uh, yeah, they, they found that. And it was pretty cool because I was thinking about that. Oh, and the cocktailing stuff too. That's also on the Twitch as well, obviously. Um, but so I was thinking about it because I, I had this moment and I was like, oh no, how did these people find me? How did these people find my Twitch? How did they do that? Because I put it up publicly and I did this knowingly. But I had this moment of like derealization where I was like, oh no, how do they do that? It's the end of the world. I'm actually super honored, but I'm I'm super honored by it. I think it's really, it's actually really really cool. And I was thinking to myself, it's just like it's really interesting to consider like those network effects of like you do this, and because you know that person, it opens up other possibilities. I have no, I've literally no idea what kind of doors will be opened by any particular connection that I've made in my life, whether it's a passing chat here, a passing glance on the street, a friendly conversation at a random outing, anything. You never know what might open there. And I think that's really fascinating. I love, that's the, I think one of the wonderful, wonderful, wonderful things about being human is the fact that 
social structure, albeit a little intimidating and creepy at times, has a way of spreading. Has a re has a way of like like sprawling. It's really cool. I actually kind of like that. There's a whole separate serendipity aspect to it all too. It's great. Dom says that he means he legit never met you had it not been for Twitch. Indeed. Exactly. I mean, I feel it's definitely not the first time that I've said this, but because of Twitch, I have met wonderful people like y'all who are out there. Dom in particular, who I now have like a 200-day Snapchat streak with, which by the way, if anybody wants that, <laughs> I'm more than happy to do so. It's mostly pictures of toast, me eating toast in the morning. So if you're in that kind of stuff, <laughs> we got it. <laughs> but um, it's great. I would have never been able to meet those people. And also, too, I have friends from back home that I haven't talked to in years. Fo folks from back home who, I, I there's at least one person individual, th there's one, per well, one person in particular who comes up every once in a while now. We hang out more, and I think it's more than we ever hung out in high school outside of classes because it was the cocktail stuff, the cocktail stream, and it was great. And I've reconnected with people from all different parts of my life because of this, because lo and behold, it's the internet and it's getting out there sometime. It's great. Usually those pictures are some quality, half-eaten toast most of the time. That's true. That's true, that's true. And every once in a while with Snapchat filters and stuff. I honestly, it puts a smile on my face in these times. So, oh, botched harvest. So sad. Let's buy some more cookie stuff. I'm playing cookie clicker, right? Yeah, I'm definitely, I've definitely been playing cookie clicker for the past two hours. Most definitely. Um, oh, is that a birthday cookie? Aw. Cookie production multiplier plus one for every year Cookie Clicker has existed. Plus eight. Love that. Cookie Clicker has existed for eight years? Oh, I love Cookie Clicker. Yeah, that's right. That checks out. I started playing Cookie Clicker back in high school. Nice. Like that. Okie dokie. Uh, what can I buy? I can buy more uh, Cortex Bakers. Can I buy... Okay. I would need 10 Octillion for 50 of them. Um, idol versus. Let's go for some Septilians ones. Let's go for the Septilians. Idol verse? Okay. Septilian, 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 Septilian. A lot of Septilians on here. Alright. Lots of these good stuff. I love that. Dom says, I think the other day you turned yourself into an avocado eating avocado toast. Boy. Oh, you know what that was? It might have been the AI generated avocado dog. Uh, there's a there's an uh, there's um there's an AI out there called Dolly Two D A L L hyphen Two uh, sorry D A L L hyphen E the number two and uh, there's a public there's a public version of it out on GitHub somewhere um, it's wacky you can literally tell it to draw anything and it'll make something for you it's creepy in a way but it's also enticing I saw uh, there's a there's a comic artist that I follow on Twitter um, who at Litterbox Comics. And it's a mom who draws comics about her family and family life and stuff, but in the form of a cat family and other animal families. It's kind of cool. It's very cute, too. Um, but she started playing around with Dolly, too. And I think she sent uh, a couple uh, a couple images of horror golf Garfield, I think. And it's exactly what you would think it'd be. It's like Lumpy Touch era stuff. It's not pixelated, though, which Lumpy Touch is the king on. Um, but it's it could be horrifying. Te technology is awesome, but also terrifyingly amazing. All that stuff. I'm trying to think too. I actually applied because I have like student, cre like official student credentials, and I think I'm in that industry, I guess, where like I um I applied to be able to have access to Dolly 2 because I want to see what else I can do with it. I don't know what I would be able to bring to the table, to be perfectly honest. I don't know exactly what I would be able to use AI for that my computer can handle right now, but um, I'd love to figure it out. I would love, I, I don't know, I want to be able to like cross certain aspects of my life together and it'd be really really cool if um I, I i think it'd be really really cool if i can figure out a way to somehow put ai and machine learning into stream just because not because we got any particular goal but just because we want to horror garfield is a nightmare i would definitely recommend watching lumpy touches pixel horror Gar garfield on the internet if y'all are into that kind of stuff because i certainly am what if you bring a table to the table a table to the table Bring a table to the table? Like to the AI? A table to the table. Any uh, I don't know if I interpreted that correctly. Excuse me while I remove my socks. It's very hot in here. And uh, I have... These are my socks today. They're very striped. Perhaps, eh? Perhaps. Perhaps if you bring the table to the table. 
Garfield where's the Lazaga honestly you know what we're on the topic of it now let's um let's go generate AI art how about it Is anybody into that let's do that just for a quiet just to a quick for a quick second let's do that oh, what is OBS saying you good OBS yeah you're fine dude don't complain OBS it'll be just fine all right let's bring this tab over doll e2 let's generate some art it was cookie clicker for a hot second we're gonna diverge from that just for a moment where is the one on github where are you i need to make sure i go to the right one obs needs to shut up and just do it come on obs get with the program oh, where are you doll e dolly mini dolly mini that's it and on hugging face dolly mini hugging face co there we go. Let's do a table bringing a table to a table. I can't spell. Bringing a table to a table. Let's see. It might be too much. Maybe it's too little. I'm not exactly sure. Who knows? But in the meantime, cookies. Oh, look. What a nice cookie. How nice of this cookie to show up. We've got AI running in the background on some website. It's beautiful. Honestly, let's get some prompts. Let's get some AI prompts. This is this is wildly entertaining. I actually, I brought this up. Uh, my, my youngest brother graduated last Wednesday. That's why there was no stream. And so we went out to dinner that night to celebrate. I brought this up to, the, to my family at the table and I passed it around to everybody to show the horrors and the beauty that AI can be. All right, let's go back and see if it did it. Do we get it yet? Nope, not yet. All right. Back to the cookies then. It'll take a little bit. It can usually take anywhere from, I think, a minute to two minutes. What is that? Soul crushing juice? Soul crushing orange juice. I like that one. That'll be the next one. We done yet? No. What if I like, can I like, can I put one on one side, one on the other? Can I put cookie clicker to the side? I don't, whoa. Hi there. No. Cookie clicker? Where'd cookie clicker go? Cookie clicker. Hey. Oh, right, because it's in full screen mode. Can I, like... Oh. Oh, no. Okay. Well, that's all right. Well, at least we can do that, and we can watch the cookie in the background. Well, this is kind of trippy. The cookie might be making it slow. Now, I think this... So, I think this is running in a web server, so I think the speed of it is more correlated to how many people are using it at once. Hey, look! It's a table. Bring it a table to a table. All right. Honestly... There's a table on a table with some wine glasses that seem to be merging into said table. Interesting. What about this thing? It's a table and a table. It's a table with two chairs. These images up close are, like, oddly terrifying. Like, it can be anything. You know what? This is just going to be a thing that we do for a little while. So I'm going to change... Changing... Just chatting, I guess? It's just chatting now. It's, uh, drawing things with AI while playing Cookie Clicker in the background. I love that. All right, cool. It's been changed. And I'm also working on cosplay stuff, too. It's all about multitasking. Well, there's your table and a table and a table. Table on a table on a table bringing a table to a table. I guess if you were bringing a table to a table, you would have to, like, push the table in. Or like, I guess lift, You would the table would need arms to lift with it. It's abstract, we like that. All right, bone crushing, soul crushing, orange juice. I'm curious. Bring that to the side and go back to the, to the clicker. Clicker, nope, not that one, silly. This one, where to click, where to click, where to click at? I'll let that run in the background. Uh. Actually, I want to see. Can I actually put this on full screen off? There we go. Well, now everybody gets to see my desk, my desktop. So, yay! Hey, it totally works. Get the milk selector out of here. Nice. I can't believe that. I, well, that kind of looks a little wonky, and you can't really see it behind my face. But oh, uh, that's all right. Well, in the meantime, ADHD sunshine. I like that. 
That's a nice further prompt. In the meantime, I'm gonna go back to my sewing stuff. <laughs> generating AI images while profusely clicking on cookies, uh, while also while also generating pictures with the AI of the internet, specifically a uh, natural language processing model known as Dolly 2, which I think maybe based off of GPT-2, which I don't know what that stands for, to be perfectly honest. I wish I knew, but I don't. This could just be our thing tonight. I'm into it. Honestly, I just wanted to play Cookie Clicker and do my, um, do my embroidery. Because, like, I'm running behind on this. I really am. It's coming along well. It's coming along well. Um, it's still gonna take me a while. Full Metal Cookie Mantra. Full Metal Cookie. Full Metal Cookie. Oh, look at that! Soul Crushing Orange Juice. All right, there's soul crushing orange juice. I get that. I see you took my advice of the clicking of cookies. Advice? Oh, honey. I've been clicking the cookies since the beginning of the week. I've put over 300 hours into this, finally topping C Clicker Heroes, which is a game that I played nonstop for two weeks while I was doc doped up on oxycodone after my wisdom teeth were removed. In any case, uh, what's next? Soul crushing orange juice, honestly? This isn't very soul crushing, although this glass here is merging with an orange fruit, uh, an orange peel. Eh. I think it's a little lackluster. That one's kind of. Oh. What's going on there? Interesting. It's just a lot of oranges. One of the things that I was thinking about the use for uh, AI, at least in my stream stuff, is I feel like generating images with AI for the thumbnails could be really cool. What else do we have on there? Let's see. ADHD Sunshine? ADHD Sunshine. ADHD Sunshine. I like that one. Love that. Sims Jeff says, I used to want to be a seamstress, but my threading skills are just so-so. That was a good one. I like that. I, I like that one. That's a good pun. We need to have rewards for puns around here. I wish I could do something cool for puns. Here. Jeff, you've earned this. <laughs> <laughs> you've earned that. There's more of that's coming from if you got more puns up your sleeve. Apocalyptic orange juice. That's a possibility. I'd like to see what the inner, what the, uh, um, what the model interprets as apocalyptic, and how that changes the orange juice. Honestly, if you think about it, those orange juices was actually a little apocalyptic in the sense that, like, in that world post-apocalypse, the concept of the orange has merged with the concept of the orange juice in the glass. It's all merged together. There is no distinction between glass and juice. It is just orange juice or whatever. The AI likes Walter White for some reason, interestingly enough. What part of Walter White? The whole making making blue methamphetamine? Uh, blue meth? Crystal blue crystal meth, or the whole, um, um, he had cancer, I think. That, that was a part of Walter White's character development. He was also an asshole, and deserved literally everything that happened to him in that show. Just him. Just him in general. He's also, like, kind of bald. You know, actually... Oh my god. Is this what ADHD looks like? That's beautiful. What is that last one? What even is this? This looks like- Oh my god! <laughs> that looks like it was supposed to be like the face of the sun from like, Teletubbies or something. Oh my god! <laughs> what are these things? My mental illness does not feel this way. I don't think this represents ADHD. What about this is ADHD? Trying to make the faces of the suns. That that's a. I enjoy that one. That one's giving me. That one's giving me uh, Garfield vibes. <laughs> I had the white dust. I put the white dust. Oh, it's gonna be a good day. It's gonna be a good day indeed. This one took the wrong white dust. This guy straight up snorted sugar. He's like, <laughs> my nose is on fire. You're 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 doing all right, honestly. You. I thought you were like blowing a kiss. For a moment. But I don't, I don't think you are anymore. 
<laughs> I like that one. And then this dude here. Yeah, I don't... Eyebrows? At the very least, like, the some of the features that we can pick out from these is the fact that all of the ADHD sunshines all have faces. Which I feel must be significant. I can screenshot that and save that, right? Oh, hell yeah. I'm saving... I'm saving these. They will all be posted later on the Discord. Because... I just, some of the, some of the good ones. What else did we have there? We had we had Alex Walter White. What is the last one? What mental illness? Wheeze apocalyptic orange juice. I'm gonna go with an apocalyptic. An ap okay. Walter White. Did I spell that right? Walter White drinking apocalyptic orange juice. We're gonna combine some prompts together. That's what we'll do. Oh, cookie. Nice. I'm gonna click on that in the background. Oh yeah, the white dust all right. My goodness. That was a mildly terrifying. Honestly, I'm into it. And although, for anybody who does have ADHD out there, like Dom, for instance, I hope it doesn't feel that way. Because I feel like, I feel like you wouldn't want that. Or maybe you do. Perhaps, perhaps the son that was going like this is having a really, really good time and he just wants to be that way. This one should be promising. I think so. I think so. It depends on... So, like, I, I don't know. I don't know. I think this AI is having a hard time with fruits and orange juice. It has its ups and downs. It's AI. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's finicky. Unpredictable. You never know what you're going to find. You really never know at all. But what will it be next? I don't know. Might be too complicated, but should be amusing. Oh, no, no. This thing, this can get complicated. So, I think one of my favorites that I pulled out at dinner was... An impressionist painting of an elephant. And lo and behold, for the for the people in my family that were familiar with impressionism, which is not me, they, the, the picture was quite enticing. Oh, the ADHD thing. Oh, it has its ups and downs with the ADHD. Well, technically speaking, the sun has its ups and downs too. It must rise and it must fall. Just like ADHD. At least that's that's the connection that I'm trying to build from here. I could very well I, I might not be knowing what I'm talking about, which honestly wouldn't be the case. It wouldn't be surprising to me. Oh my god! It's Walter White drinking orange juice. <laughs> I mean, I mean, to be fair, these are some very interesting iterations of Walter White, but it definitely got the character. The character was spot on. I think it prioritizes certain words or pairings. Oh yeah, like orange and Walter White. Look at this gentleman. We also have so that this one looks like this is Walter White holding an orange juice gun against his head. That's what it looks like. It kind of looks like almost there, kinda. Although it kind of looks like a sleeve or pieces of his skin. He's merged with the orange juice. It kind of reminds. It's kind of like a GTA thing. This one gives me a painting vibe. Like a, I don't remember what style painting it is, but I recognize that. He's just like, dude, he's straight up got a bay leaf in there. I think he's drinking on a cocktail. Looks like an OJ bowl. It's Picasso. It's very Picasso-like. I agree. This one here, Walter White is eating an orange with one hand, and he's got the orange juice in the other one. That's what's going on there. Actually, what I'm going to do, for the, for the purposes of this thing, I'm going to put myself up in this corner of the screen. Oh. I apparently can't do that. Why am I, uh... Oh. Yeah, just... Can I go here? No? Oh, I have my mouse keys on. There we go. There we go. I forgot. I couldn't switch my corners unless I did that. That didn't really help, actually. Hmm. I need to chat on the other side. Eh. That's okay. We'll worry about it later. I'm gonna keep myself back in the other corner. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. What else do we got going on here? Thanos looking for his mom in a Walmart. I like that. Cat dog bank lo cat dog bank loan. Walter, my guy. Walter, my guy. Take that. Alright, let's do. We did meatball girls. Let's go back to Dom. Cat dog bank loan. Cat dog bank loan. As in like cat dog from the show Cat Dog getting a bank loan. It's um it's a it's apparently a necessary part of life. Uh, what else can we do for more cookies in the meantime? More idol verses? That's pretty cool. But have you ever heard of genuine human connection, Cookie Clicker? Ooh. Forever and ever. Amen. Cookies into oblivion. All cookies, all the time. More grandmas. Oh, my embroidery has fallen. 
I hope it merges a real dog and a cat. Ugh. I want to see that. Honestly, my favorite part of this stuff is probably... It's the monstrosityness of it all. That sounds horrifying, um, maybe. Or maybe it's just beautiful. Maybe half of them will be cat dog, and half of them will be cat and dog combined. One never knows. There is only one way to find out. Oh, uh, hi there, golden cookie. Don't miss the golden cookie. Cookie. Nice. Oh, did I break one of my things? Oh, thank goodness. That's good. Fix yourself. I mean, I could. Let's see. Uh, my, my headphones are getting a little, a little hot in here. Let me, let me, uh, put my party heads back. Let's change their orientation a little bit. That's pretty good. Now I got a horn in the back and horn in the front. On top of my head. Yeah, I like that. Excellent. Pure Portal's gonna go get some sleep. Enjoyed watching the stream, and I hope to join more often in the future. Don't pressure yourself. Get yourself some nice rest over there. I hope it's enjoyable and well rested. Hopefully you get more sleep than I did last night, which was not a lot, because I was up till 2 a.m. Oh! Oh, it's like a piggy bank! I get that. It's like it's cat dog piggy banks. All right. This one here is concerning to me. That dog has three eyes. Interesting. This one here is like a... It's very abstract. It's very bulbous. This took a turn. I, I was not expecting piggy bank. Honestly, this is good. I love how this one's got like a... A cool little insignia on it. it reminds me of nature. That one looks like a horse. This one is an animal. This one here is most definitely a dog. I don't see a much cat on there. Although I guess I see a whisker coming off the side. And these ears are a little, these ears are a little catty. Um, that's that's literally a cat merged with a dog next to a fake cat. It reminds me of an egg. It's very, it's very eggy. Which one? This guy? That one's very. I think one of these was very eggy. They're all, some of them are very eggy. That one's like... That one's quite literally a kitty bank. That's a demon. Quite literally. Demons from the netherworlds. Oh, this is a good cookie thing right here. Oh, my numlock are on. There we go. That's a good one. Uh, Alright, I like those. It's cookie clicking time. Let me go back to the screenshot. What was the other one? His eyes are soulless. They are. Lucky cat dog took a turn. What else was there? Gonna go get sleep. That was that. Lucky cat dog. It's a demon. Where are you? Oh. Thanos looking for his mom in a Walmart. It's Thanos looking for his mom in a Walmart. I appreciate that. Usually, you know, it's actually interesting. Usually, um, I'm, I will usually get um, things that say like, oh, it's busy right now. So you're gonna have to wait and try again. But this has been consistently good tonight. That other one was like a cat dog marshmallow peep. It did look like that. It was like, it was like marshmallow cat, marshmallow peep, then the dog, and then the cat. But they're all kind of getting together. I don't know if that one was actually a piggy bank. Maybe it took bank in another way, like a bank note or something. I don't know. Something about that was shocking indeed. Hmm. Nice job, cookie clicker. You've done it. Congrats. More fractal engines. Idol versus. Yo, yeah. More fractals, my dude. Frozen fractals all around. How many stitches can I get in before the AI comes back with a vengeance? Come on, come on. Oh, come on. You got it. You got it, Cam. All right, all right. That's um. That's one stitch completed. Oh, it's back. <laughs> Look, I think Thanos found her. Or maybe that's just some other random patron. Cookie. <laughs> oh my god. Well, I can't guarantee that this is a Walmart. It looks similar to what I know Walmarts to be. Th Thanos literally snapped half this guy into oblivion. And this guy, Thanos really let himself go in this one. Oof. That's pretty good. He doesn't have the Infinity Gauntlet in that one. He's got the Infinity Gauntlet in this one. Not that one. Not that one. That's like Cyclops Thanos. Very, very specifically Walmart. This Thanos is watching this man who is half, it's like a quarter golf club, a quarter phasing out of existence. This man is a vacuum cleaner, actually. This man is a vacuum cleaner with an entire container of pine saw for a head. It's beautiful. What happened to his leg? 
I think it's part of a vacuum or a golf club. I honestly could see it either way, but this kind of looks like an RC car down there, and this is like a shadow of where his legs would be. <laughs> Wheeze. Hilarious. This one here. All right. I'm gonna be honest. I have never been to a Walmart that has their vegetables stacked like this. This is, I, if this is the candy aisle, I understand that. But if this is supposed to be like vegetables and stuff, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it as a Walmart. Here's an Infinity Gauntlet one with the entirety of uh, the, 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 the Walmart verse in the background and more candy aisle. It's all candy. Is it all candy aisles? It kind of looks all like candy. The vegetables. You're missing your Infinity Gauntlet and have an extra um, twin growing off your peck. Um, uh, and you, you are glowing. Wow. <laughs> Incredible! Indeed. I think it's chips. And that's chips. Chips aren't that long. I've never seen chips like that. Alright, this one's... This one's mine. Let's... Nothing. Wait. Metaphorically, nothing. Let's see what it comes up with. I think really what we're trying to go for here is I basically asked the I asked the AI to draw the void, aka. See so you know what it does with that. I've actually so I did try my name. I tried camera uh, my full name as well as camera with an X, and it comes with it came up with a camera. That's what it came up with the first time. But you know what? We'll try it anyways. We'll see it. We'll give it a shot. A camera? Yes, indeed a camera. Sorry, I was looking at my work. Uh, I was working at my work email for a moment. I got a very, very interesting email from one of our device manufacturers. It was very interesting. What's that? Yeah, you can interrupt. What's up? Do you want to put some a art into the AI? No. I'm informing you of where we are stopping on the way to the wedding. Oh, yeah. Don't say when we're going to the wedding yet. Perfect. <laughs> I have to keep some things on lockdown. Not yet. I'll share the reason why after the wedding. It's not my wedding. Uh, um, so on the way down, we're going to stop at a field of tiki's. Field of tiki's? What state is that in? It's in Delaware. Delaware. Yeah. Nice. Then we're going to Blackwater Relics, which is an antique shop. On the way back, we will see... Anna, wait. Look at this. It's what metaphorically it? nothing. It's a what? It's metaphorically nothing. That's terrifying. Apparently nothing... I don't like the, whim the person that has eyes, but they're made out of hands. Which one's made of hands? This one? That one. Oh my god. They're like an oblongy... Like there's a fork in its eye. You see that? Like what do you see? Thing? A fork? Fork? Right there? Fork? Let's find vaguely fork. That's wild. Alright, then we'll do camera with an X. Tell me more about... So, context. Anna and I are heading to a wedding soon. Another one. We've been going to a lot of weddings recently. Um, You've been to one so far. Well, that's pretty much a lot. I usually don't go to any. Uh, but we're, we have to take a long drive for it. It's like a seven hour drive. So seven she figured we, she, uh, she's usually the kind of person who finds stops along the way. So dearest, continue. The last two, so on the way back, we'll stop at a mini Statue of Liberty hmm. in Virginia and Miles the Monster in Delaware. <laughs> He's apparently a racetrack, uh, like big, big, and I just hope there's no racing that day because I that could be going to a racetrack? It's not time for We betting on horses? No, we're not doing that. That's okay. I don't want to bet money. That's a slippery slope. Yeah. Camera on the next. It's cameras. It's all cameras. We'll look up Miles the Monster now. We have the internet at our disposal. It looks like you, except it's a messed up version of your neck. I have much longer and much more beautiful hair than that. Much more. Why the camera? Because my name sounds like camera. I wonder if it actually sounds it out. What is it, Miles the Monster? No, I meant 
Oh. Well, that's Miles the monster, not according to AI. I wonder what the AI, AI thinks. Miles the monster, and then we'll get to the convoluted, the the long one that Meatball Girl and the and her Japanese friends have shared. Miles the monster. Come on, Miles. Oh, am I out of? No, nah, no, nah, I'm still good. Why though? I don't know. AIs are stupid. Uh, the one that Meatball Girl came up with, uh, and friend, found that came out really good. Darth Va- oh god. Darth Vader enjoying a cheeseburger. Also, congrats, you're my background noise while I cook mashed potatoes. Claps for potatoes. Clap for massage. What about Kilometers the Monster? What about Tile- whoa. Miles Tails per kilometer. We're from the US. We use not the metric system because we're stupid. Well. It happens to the best of us. It. Have fun, my dearest. The light. the light. I'm changing my category back to cookie clicker. It seems more, uh... Seems more accurate. Oh my god! Oh, yo, it's literally... It's Monsters, Inc., dear. I need to see this! It's... Why? Well, one of them is vaguely Monsters, Inc. Uh, others are... Oh god! This is kind of like terrifying. That. Oh my god. <laughs> this dude! He has a belly button. He does have a belly button, or maybe it's another mouth, for all we know. I don't like that. That's kind of terrifying. What is going on here? Hi there, Miles. Kilometers the mountain. We're not stupid. We're just different. All right. That's switched. Now, let's do the Darth Vader eating a cheeseburger. They're literally monsters now, Anna. They are. Vader enjoying a cheeseburger. I'm gonna add even more complexity to this. I need something complex. On a hot Sunday. So, Darth Vader enjoying che enjoying a cheeseburger on a gas giant. What the heck? At say nightfall. Oh my god. Yeah. I like that one. It's complex. It's a little convoluted, but I think it's gonna work out just fine. I think it'll be all right. Now the question is how many steams like how many stitches I can get past. I think I've done two rows of stitches so far. That's Honestly. Productive. What'd you say? Not very productive. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I got like twelve achievements in Cookie Clicker 2, so your opinion doesn't matter. Let me see that. No, you don't get the look. The people get the look. Oh. Let's not you get the look. You're special to me right now. You're so rude. I could just go over to my computer. No, you're not allowed to. Turn off my stream, Anna. No. Never watch my streams again. You've been prohibited. Oh, I missed it. I'll ban you. Can I ban a mod? Is that a thing that I can do? Yes, you can actually. I no, can ban no, a mod. Don't do don't think I won't, dear. Oh, I tangled my stitches again. <laughs> That's what I get for shit talking my girl. I will be the new mod, Anna. What? Dom's gonna take your place. Oh yeah? Yeah. Oh yeah? Yeah. All right, well, I suppose the only logical uh, conclusion is we have to have you two fight to the death. Um, I can just not make it. Whoever survives will be the next mod of the kingdom of what, what season is it now? Summer? Summer Garden. Well, there goes your dinner for the next week. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. We can be reasonable here. I can make dinner. Hey, look at that! <laughs> wow, some of them actually got all of it. And in one case, Darth Vader got a little piece of himself in the background too. Oh my dear. Wow, I guess look at Darth that. Vader is actually pretty nice. Yeah. Know. Well, yeah, it's enjoying a cheeseburger. That's pretty nice. That's pretty classy there. Nice. Bottom left though. Well, you don't like That's not a cheeseburger. Actually, you know what that looks like? That looks like that looks like a hot dog, but instead of a dog, it's a corn on the cob. <laughs> could you imagine? Could you imagine eating a hot dog like corn on the cob, or having a hot dog, but instead of the, the it's, it's exactly what I said. Imagine that for a moment. Darth Vader is giving Darth Vader a cheeseburger. Oh my god, I love this. Here, have a cheeseburger. I don't know why, but I thought that was the Enterprise in the background. There's I certainly no gas giant here. His face. That one I think is the best one. That's Darth Vader 
enjoying a cheeseburger on a gas giant at nightfall. Although he's not on the gas giant, he's like in front of a gas giant. That looks like a bouncy ball. Calzone? Calzone? Bouncy ball? That's Jupiter. Or, or, or an alternate dimension Jupiter. Let's call it Cupiter. Cupiter. It's a calzone. How about my, uh, what was that other message? From French and Japanese friends, it's to convert me to metric. I already understand Celsius better than Fahrenheit. It's a marble. It's a gas marble. It's a giant ass marble. That, or Darth Vader is very, very, very far in the background, making it look like he's, this, the marble is as big as he is. It's all about perspective. You can also have multiple mods. That is, that is true. That is true. I could probably use another mod. Anna, you don't do anything. I only have one. Well. Darth Vader. Blue giants are made primarily of helium. Let's do let's do something scientific. Can we do scientific thing? Of course. What's something that's totally out there? How about how about we do we do chemicals. Chemicals. How about I'm totally blanking on this. What kind of chemicals? What are chemicals? Everything is chemicals. How about cyanide? No, that's not... Chemicals aren't cool. They're just... They're just things. How about fireworks in the shape of... Popcorn. That's... Burnt popcorn. Burnt popcorn. Burnt popcorn. That's what fireworks in the shape of burnt popcorn. I'm good with it. Aren't you a mod? Only person I've seen as mod is Anna over the last year and a half. Meepo girl, you haven't been on in a little while, so I was I was doing going doing some cleaning up of the mod stuff, but uh we can revisit that in a little bit. Haven't been around in a while. You gotta come in more often. Once you <laughs> you gotta earn the right to modulate the cute not modulate. Nope, it's moderate. No, 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 no. You know what? You have to earn the right to modulate the community. And by modulate the community, I mean, like, you can take all this chat stuff and, like, I don't know, modulate color, modulate voice. I can make, I can modulate my voice. Oh, is this not running? Oh, it needs to run. There we go. With mod powers, you can do shit like this and modulate your voice a lot. Or, or just, like, or not. <laughs> I don't know. All right, back to the embroidery. It's um, my, my, um, my... The fabric that I'm actually like putting it into is slowly but surely coming apart. And it's unfortunate. Give me that, give me that. There we go. Oh, no, 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 Darth Vader. That's fine. Give me the butter popcorn. Give me the fireworks and the shaman bird popcorn. And then we'll get something really specific. Scarily specific. Something that shouldn't exist in this world. Like, um, I don't know, what's something cursed? Things that I remember not so fondly from my childhood. Let's think about things like that. What don't I like from the, my childhood? Personally, I wasn't a big fan of Sesame Street, I don't think. Um, I think the idea of the puppets and stuff is... That's not in the shape of bird popcorn. That was a bad one. I don't like that one. I don't like that one at all. How about... How about something curse? Ketchup and mayonnaise. How do you spell mayonnaise? How do you spell mayonnaise? What the hell? Why don't I know how to spell mayonnaise? I thought I spelled that right. Ketchup and mayonnaise. Having no. Ketchup and mayonnaise fighting for custody. There we go. Who's gonna have custody custody of the child of ketchup and mayonnaise? A drawing of Big Bird in a courtroom made it spell wrong. I did it. Make it spell wrong. It might give better cursed images. Oh, both of my party heads fell off. Oh dear. Oh, ah, ah, oh my god. Excuse me while I fix myself. For custody of mustard. Oh, for custody of mustard. Actually, I'm curious to see what the AI determines is uh is the ba is the child in this case. <laughs> in a war of condiments. Who gets custody of the children? I do not know. I do not know. It might give better cursed images if we do it uh, spelled incorrectly. That's a possibility. I kind of like that, actually. Mayonnaise. Mayonnaise. Start over. 
Start over? Did I start it over? Oh, hi there. Okay. Well, I don't know if I started it over, but I gave it a shot. We'll see how that works. With the mayonnaise spelled wrong. It's spelled my way. My mayonnaise. That's the way I do it. Um, I like ketchup and mayonnaise. I think it's a valid combo. Oh, that's the big one. Oh, nice. When you get the frenzy and the clicker frenzy together, the, the click bonus and the big golden cookie one, that's how you do it. That's how you go in all, up all the levels. In the south, they call it fry sauce. Oh, yeah, actually, I have some fry sauce in this apartment. I have some fry sauce, and it was from the south, I'm pretty sure. I don't know where south. Or it might have been Ohio. That's not the south at all. All right, nice. He who controls the cookies controls the universe. That's a Dune reference. Well, come on. You guys are clearly having a large battle over custody. 1%. Eh, it's okay. We could have Octillion. What else can we buy? Cortex Bakers. Nice. I need 95 Octillion for that. Just use your imagination. Indeed. And all these cookies, too. Nice, nice. Eh, that's fine. It's usually a mix of ketchup and mayo with some seasonings. Yeah, I think that's... I, I don't recall it tasting like super... It's not crazy. It tastes good. I like it. It's a, it's a, it's a white-ish orange colored sauce. So if you were to tell me it's a combination of mayonnaise and ketchup together, I would believe you. Because it is. The Freddy's, fr Freddy's Spicy Fry Sauce is pretty good. You know, I wonder... Let's... While this is generating, let's go see... Let's see what kind of fry sauce we got. If I didn't throw it out already, I know we got it a while ago. Let's see. Fry sauce? Where the sauce at? Where be the sauce? There you are! Alright, the fry sauce that we have in our collection is, um... Double Sips. Stevens. Stevens Fry Sauce. It's, uh... It's this guy. This is our Stevens Fry Sauce. It's fry sauce. Fries want it, ketchup wants to be it. After one dip of your favorite salty side into our fry sauce, you'll be hogging the basket all to yourself. From fries to onion rings popper, onion rings, poppers, embrace the crave and dare to double dip. Shake well, some separation is normal. Refrigerate after opening. Double dips fry sauce, embrace the crave. Hmm. It's pretty good. I think, honestly, I've had better fry sauces. Also, this has been running for a long time, so this is either a really, really good one, or I think I need to restart. It never takes this long. I'm gonna... I'm gonna restart it. Oh no! Oh! It was there for a split second! Oh no! Oh! I was this close. I have to do it again. And we'll make it better. Ket Cup. How about Ket Cup and Mayonnaise fighting for. Ch uh, uh, um, fighting for. Who has to pay alimony? There we go. That's what it'll be. Usually put them on burgers. Just try going back, maybe. Oh. Oh, maybe? Okay, so that means if I duplicate the tab and go back. Maybe? <sighs> nah. Oh, that's so unfortunate. There is definitely at least one frame of this stream that got it. Which, um, I'm, I'm happy to say. Luckily, we record this stuff. If It's just still out there. It's out there on the internet somewhere. It may be fleeting now, but it could come back with a vengeance. Oh, that was kind of cool. Unfortunate. Oh, well, that's okay. Dolly, I thank you for this experience. This has been wonderful so far. It ain't dead yet. It ain't dead yet. Nah, you can't kill anything that's on the internet. <laughs> People have tried. You can't. The internet is unstoppable. At least I'd like to believe so. Speaking of the internet, I finally, I've been doing a lot of binge watching of stuff recently. And um, I think my most recent victim was watching uh, Bo Burnham's Inside, um, his his whole special on Insta being inside. I like. I don't think I've ever actually listened to all the music and whatnot, but um, but I liked it. It was pleasant. It really reminded me of the times where I was staying indoors at my parents' place from co in the midst of COVID time, completing my studies as a young scholar. I'm still a young person, but I'm no longer a scholar. That's a good one. It is a good one. We killed MySpace. Well, apparently, we did. We just used it today. We were actually just looking into MySpace early, and apparently, it's still prop up uh, for musicians. What is this? 
Ketchup and mayonnaise fighting for who has to pay Alamut. Oh, because... Ketchup. Ketka. It's a cup. I see. Oh. Well, that was a waste. That's unfortunate. Well, we had the opportunity, at least for a brief moment, to imagine what the possibility of them fighting over custody was. Dare I repeat the same prompt again? Nah, we'll move on. Or we can do the original. Why not? We've got time to kill. Ketchup and mayo naze. Naze? 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 Ketchup. Mayon I can't even freaking spell mayonnaise. Mayonnaise fighting over custody. Because I guess custody is a little more uh, potent than alimony. Alimony is just like a... I guess a general law concept. I don't know. I'm not a lawman. I took a law class once. That was it, though. I passed it. Didn't take any more law courses after that. Didn't need to. Did not want to. Alright, how many more farther do I need to go down? I need to go one more down before I start working on the R. You still spelled it wrong. That's the point. We're supposed to. I I think. That was the plan. Yeah, that was the plan. That was totally the plan. I did it on purpose. I'm not crazy. No crazy. I don't know I don't know how to spell mayonnaise. Everybody knows how to spell mayonnaise. Oh, I'm trapped again. No. Oh, that's that's okay actually. That's okay. Oh, just stabbing myself with my uh stabbing myself with my needle. Alright, cookie. Cookie star! Woo! So many cookies! So many cookies! Actually, having the window small like this actually makes the cookies a lot easier to click on. Wow, that's incredible. Look at that. Wow, that's incredible. Epic. Did I kill everything? Oh, my plants are now... Aww. Oh, I did that wrong. Oh well. I have a bunch of cookies now. That's great. I love that. We'll buy more Cortex Brains things. More of that stuff. Oh, 70 million for that. What else can I upgrade? More Septillions. Septillion, Tillion, 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 Sep, Sep, Tillion, 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 Septillion. Oh! That wasn't the same! Wow. I guess it just depends. I don't know how what the reproducibility of all this stuff is, but like, I'm so disappointed that I clicked past it. It literally the wrong moment. The exact wrong moment. Jeez. I am sorry, y'all. I have failed you. That's okay. Well, this is ketchup and mayonnaise fighting over custody, and to be perfectly honest, I don't see any mayonnaise here. I see what could be considered mustard. I'd say that's very mustard-heavy, in my opinion. In any case, I think what I will do is I will cease the AI-ness for now. I think I'm getting tired of typing things in. I need to go back to my things. Perhaps catch up one. Oh, you know. This could very well be the fight. That could be the fight of it all. Alright, well. Thank you, everybody, for joining me on that. That was interesting for a moment. Sorry for my face in the background. I have my thumbnails going for my backgrounds to show me how I can improve upon things. Options. Let's get back on this. Back on this full screen. Yeah. Full screen cookie clicker all the time. And in the background, what I'll do is I'll put things up on... I don't know, is this art? I would consider this to be art. I think so. On topic? I don't know, man. Discuss what's currently going on. I'll discuss my own stuff. AI art. There we go. We'll upload all of them. Oh, hi there, screen. No, not my files. That's fine. It was just the prideful milk punch stuff. Interesting. Oh, I got only got a picture of the... That's okay. It seems that for some of them, it only did one photo at a time, but we'll we'll catch up what we got. There we go. Gotta love that. Art for sure. Oh, I put it on topic. Ah! No! Whoa, that the owner of the party ledge has requested that Discord block any messages or most our mostly accurate robots deemed to be explicit. My- What? Clyde, what are you talking about? No! What? Why did you do that? No. That's not inappropriate. Was content moderation turned on? Moderation? What? No! Why would you do that? Alright, well, I guess I'll figure that out off, off the, after the stream. For some reason, Clyde decided that I wasn't good enough to- I wasn't able to post those photos. Stupid AI. 
That's okay. Dom says that they're gonna head off now as well, but glad to be here. Glad to have you, Dom. So glad that you came around. Aspiring mods don't leave. They never leave. Nah, it's okay. You have my full uh, full permission. It will not affect your eligibility for stream modulation. I've definitely said full news through Discord, so that is strange. It is very strange. I do not know why it wouldn't let me do that. I think disrespectful. How dare you disrespect me? Don't you disrespect me. Don't you... There's other parts of that song that I don't know. Oh, what was that, dear? Don't you disrespect me. Don't you derogate or derive. What's next? You are my world now, not your world. And I've got friends on the other side. There we go. I got it. And it's proud of me. I yearn for validation. Yeah, but I also showed up right at the beginning. Brownie points for Dom there. You know what you get? A thumbs up, dude. You've earned it, man. Go, go, bring it in. Bring it in. Pow. Nice. Anyway. Now time to go back to the glory of Cookie Clicker. This is... I have embroidery rig to be done, so we're gonna continue with it. A thumbs up or appreciate it. Yo. It's great. I actually... At work, um, before, so I, for the first month or so, worked under the guy who was in my position previously, and so, uh, we play, we play this game at work sometimes called Don't Get Got. Essentially, the concept of the game is you, there are cards that you're given in the beginning of the day, and the idea is to do, I think, most of the things on that card, uh, or get other players to do things for you on that card. For example, get a player to fist bump you three times in the day. And um, the person that I was working under um, started giving me fist bumps throughout the day because I was doing really, really good. I was a new employee at the time, and I was kind of like, you know, getting my getting my sea legs. And he gave me a fist bump, and I was like, "Yo, I love this. My coworker just gave me a fist bump. I love that." And I, I was so appreciative. And then he gave me another one throughout the day, and I was like, "Oh my god, more validation. This is so this is so cool. I'm honored." And then he gave me one more. And he was like, you just got got, man. And I felt absolutely betrayed. Um, so now, so now what uh, what winds up happening is uh, my, my, my boss now will actually give me fist bumps and I will give my coworkers fist bumps. I never tricked them. My boss hasn't tricked me yet. So the idea of the fist bump has become, um, the idea of the fist bump has become holy again to me. Holy, innocent, and beautiful. Just as it should be. Dom also says that they will destroy all the bots that storm my channel. See? That's what it's all about. So you have a max of two fist bumps per person now? Well, no, 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 no. I will not limit myself to how many fist bumps I will give a person. Damn, I will straight up, I will straight up like, like this, like all in until you want to stop. It depends on how much validation you need. If you need a bunch of validation, you can get it. Here's your validation, everyone. Put her there. Nice. Try not to punch your computer screen, TV screen, mobile device, or otherwise. It might break. Or perhaps, perhaps you, uh, you, you, you can air fist bump. That's a thing. We can, like, do the COVID thing now where, like, we, uh, we, like, uh, bump our elbows. Bam. There we go. All right. Have a good night, everyone. So long, Dom. See you next time. And so, we continue. I am still embroidering. I have much more to do. I'm sure I don't want to... This has been a blast. And it still is a blast so far. And honestly, I don't feel like going to sleep yet. I know I have to get up for work early in the morning, but... Well, this is my life, damn it. And so I'm gonna do whatever I want to. I'll catch up on my sleep over the weekend. That's what I should be doing. I don't know. I might actually have to end things soon. Because it is... A minute before midnight. Look at that. Look at that. It was pretty good. But I'm having a good time. And I also still need to get more of my embroidery done. So I think I probably should. But um, there's also some cookie cooker stuff. And I'm a fan of that. I think what I'll do is I'll give myself... 10-ish, 15-ish more minutes of some quality, quality cookie clicking and embroidery. And I think, I think then we'll call it done. I honestly, this has not felt like a three hour stream. It's the, it's the fun ones that always um, feel the best. This has been a fun one. So thank you all. Couldn't have, could have done it without you guys. Really, really couldn't have done it without you guys. 
really appreciate that. Really appreciate all my fans out there, all my love and support and fans out there, all my subscribers. Y'all are great. To everybody else, y'all are also great. Almost as equally great as everybody else. It's great. We don't have a hierarchical system here. Well, I guess technically we do, but that's not my fault. That's Bezos' fault. I blame Jeffrey Bezos. Jeffrey Bezos. Jeffrey Bezos. Something all on the floor. I'm saying in 1964, Jeffrey. Jeffrey Bezos. I now, now that I've completed the Bo Burnham Inside Special, I now have to listen to the entire album on Spotify um, multiple, multiple times over. Because naturally, that's what you do after finishing content. Content. That's what it was all about. I remember, I remember being told um, early on when I started this job of mine that I should definitely, first off, that I should definitely watch the Bo Burnham Inside Special, um, but that depend that I should save it for a certain mood because it can be a little real it can be a little depressing at times and uh honestly I was in a really good mood to watch it so I was doing all right honestly I was I was really enjoying the music I kind of like Bo Burnham's content I like um I don't think I've watched a lot of the specials though but I think he I think he's funny I think I find him more entertaining now than I did previously, because like when I first, I mean, when I first discovered Bo Burnham, I think it was during the, um, like some of the early, or you, I don't know how long he's been doing music for, I'm probably wrong on how long I've known him for, um, but I remember songs like, um, uh, I am the left brain, I am the left brain, or the, the left brain, right brain song, or probably others, I don't, I can't quite recall, yes, thank you sir, appreciate you too, but, but I was never really into it at the time because that was back in like my high school days when pretty much anybody who told me about anything, my immediate reaction was, actually, I'm not going to do that because a bunch of people do that and I don't want to do what other people do. I want to do the things that I want to do, which at the time was video games and D&D. Um, come to think of it, that's kind of still what I do now. Um, and I'm just as equal a tryhard now as I was back then worrying not about um necessarily the social aspect of things but worrying about the academic aspects of things and pushing myself to the bone but that's beside the point i think i did like that stuff I, so i didn't watch a lot of bo burnham back then because i knew a lot of people who were listening to him and i was like well i don't want to do what everybody else does i don't i don't know exactly what type of person that made me at the time i think that would made me I don't exactly know what to call it, but whatever whatever describes a person who tries to go against what societal norms have dictated for them or what the local norms are of their particular environment for, in my case at the time, was high school. I don't know what you call those people. I would think, I think once upon a time I would have said hipster, but I feel like that's inaccurate. A rebel? <laughs> I don't, I don't want to call it. I don't think I was a rebel at all. I don't think you could describe me as a rebel in the least bit. Although I suppose it was a rebel, but I guess I wasn't like, I feel like I have a certain image of what a rebel like looks like or acts like. And I mean, I mean, you could call me a mainstream rebel, I suppose, because while everybody else was hooking up and doing the drugs and doing all their things in high school and smoking cigarettes outside the yard, I was studying to get A pluses in my classes and destroy all the AP exams. I did not destroy all of them. But I mean, if that's what a rebel does, if that's what a rebel does, if that's what a rebel do, then yeah, yeah. Color me rebellious, because that's what I was. Dare I say, I'm still breaking the norms of society, breaching through the boundaries and barriers. Although I'm making, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of moving that at a, at a snail's pace, so uh, please forgive me as I take my time. Rome wasn't built in the day, they say. And, um, I certainly won't become Edgelord Cam in a day either. Although maybe one day. I've always considered the idea of, like, trying emo makeup on, and I'm sure there will be a cosplay one day that will allow me to do so. Probably. There we go. Had to switch my soil around, otherwise my plants are gonna die. I think what I'm probably gonna wind up doing is, I'm not gonna fit- I'm not gonna 
do it tonight because it would take hours. But as soon as these plants die, they've got about six to seven more hours left on them. They allow more cookies to spawn, more golden cookies, more golden happiness. And so when they die in a six hours from now, uh, I think then I'll do the ascension where I will gain um, ten times as much speed. Wait, ten? About a lot more speed that I do now. Which will allow more cookies, which will allow more achievements, which will allow more accomplishment, which will allow me to for I feel even more accomplished. Oh, and it's all about accomplishment. It's all about that good, good feels. And I don't know whether it's the endorphins, the serotonins, or the happy happy, which I suppose is what those things are. They're the happy happies, I suppose. I don't remember which chemical it is specifically. I think I think it's serotonin. I have a brain, I have a necklace back there that I wore for a while, and I'm pretty sure it's a serotonin hormone, um, but I had to stop wearing it because, as it turns out, it's made of nickel, and I have a skin sensitivity to nickel, and if I wear it for too long, it starts to turn my skin colors, and that's no good. Cyanide. Cyanide, indeed. Cyanide? It's a happy chemical. I mean, what is happiness after you are knocked out, clean, inebriated, or perhaps just dead? What is happiness to a creature that can't feel? Is it accomplishment? Is it survival? I would think it must be survival. Actually, I would think for a creature, and I don't know if there are any particular creatures that we know of out there that don't experience emotions. I don't know if we even understand emotions enough to be able to categorize whether a creature has or does not have emotions. But if we find a creature out there that doesn't experience emotions, like, I don't know, I guess you could say plants, but like plants scream, dude. Plants scream. Plants have a way of screaming, but they scream, uh, they scream as scents as opposed to sounds. Supposedly, a little food for thought, when you cut the grass and you smell the smell of cut grass, you're smelling the screams of grass. Many, many grass blades who have just been castrated. And that's cutting the grass. I mean, you could feel bad about it. I don't feel bad about it. Honestly, if... Maybe this is a very maybe this is a very ableist thing of me to say, but if the grass blades can come up to my door, form a coalition, and write me a written warning of cease or give me a written cease and desist about why I should stop hurting them, or or making them look pretty from my um my very um Im imperial standing opinions, then um maybe I'll consider. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. I don't know. The world is my oyster, and if I want to mow my lawn, I think I will. Man, what the world could be if we had free-thinking plants. Free-thinking th free pl plants that they could think all on their own. Wouldn't that be interesting? Some representative animals in DC don't experience emotions. Interesting. But, like, what do we characterize the emotions as, then? That's what I would wonder. I want. I mean, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I get. What are one of? The, I guess my next question would be, what are one of those animals? I'm very curious about that. Because I would think like, what is an emotion? Let's jump down that rabbit hole for a little bit. An emotion, I think, is a feeling that I get. Uh, it's more significant. They're in dis They're distinguishable from others. Some emotions kind of blur a little bit, but I think a primary emotion is one that doesn't feel like the other. I mean, some could say that, like, sadness and anger are, like, kind of two sides of the same coin there. But, like, like happiness... Actually, I guess they're both... Like, happiness, sadness, and anger, I feel like, all have a sort of passion to them. Happiness is, like, passionately positive. Anger is, like, passionately destructive, I think, at least. At least in my terms of anger. And I guess sadness would be, like, passionately, passionately negative. So, like, I think in that way they're distinguished love passionate in general and i know there's many many different types of love that don't translate in the english language at least but like it's just passionate in general i think i think there's a good stand in there the um think of other emotions um what are the emotions fear passionately afraid i guess it's all passion i don't know i, I i'm trying to i'm trying to counter my own argument here but I think emotions are some sort of feeling that's like, it's powerful enough. It's powerful enough to represent some feeling, I guess. But where do we get that feeling from? Well, 
knowing that I, myself, um, at least believing that most of what I experience in this world is merely because of some chemical imbalances in my brain. Fun fact, everything that you experience in the world happens in a delay. You're always seeing the past because it will always take a certain amount of time for light to reach your eyes and for your brain to process it. So you are always seeing the past. You, are never, you will never see the present day. You're starting to sound like a Kingdom Hearts antagonist. Well, consider emotions a bit from the, 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 the innermost beings of our heart. I guess, maybe? I don't really know. But, um... But going back to it, you know, emotions, at least my interpretation, my personal beliefs, I think that emotions are manifestations of chemical, chemi electrochemical signals that are shooting and darting back and forth in my brain. And somehow, I don't know how, that chemical, that electrochemical imbalance will cause me to feel certain ways. Like, for example, I can get really, really happy by getting really, really high because it shoots a bunch of dopamine up in my head. That's a chemical imbalance. That shit has to come back down. What goes up must come down. It's just, it's just physics. But without that, I can still experience that. Maybe not all at once, but it's because of that chemical imbalance that I can feel loopy, a little happy, sometimes a little confused, often very confused. But I think most emotions are probably like that. And I know the book that I was talking about earlier, that uh, it's actually my boss gave it to me, and it's like the 15 skills that conscious leaders should have. Maybe I'll be a leader one day. It's a topic for discussion for another time. But where was I going with that? But the idea is... I don't necessarily agree with it yet because I haven't gotten to the book yet, and I've yet to form my own opinion on it because I'm only seven pages in out of like 200, that... You should be able to, in any particular emotional situation, you should be able to identify what the emotion is. You don't have to dismiss it. You don't have to internalize it. You don't have to say that those emotions are right, wrong, or anything of the sort. But what it's... Oh, shoot. I did a bad thing. What it wants you... What they want you to do is to be able to identify what the emotion is, acknowledge that it is an emotion, it's probably a chemical imbalance, and like with all imbalances, it will eventually subside. And I mean, I've been thinking about that a little bit more and trying to embrace those moments a little bit. So like, I will have some times where I'm just, I'm not feeling up to it. I just don't want to do things. Like for example, like I, I had a plan for what I wanted to do for stream tonight. I wanted to play uh, an indie game. I wanted to stream for like an hour and then I was going to stop. And then I was going to work on my embroidery and play cookie clicker. Cause that's what I wanted to do because it comforted me. And so I thought, you know, why bother with the indie game? I can always play it another time. It's been a very, it's a hectic month. I gotta get some things done before the end of the month. Uh, specifically, this guy. Uh, I'm gonna get in there. I'm getting there good. But I figure, better for me to do this. So, I did. And I'm a lot, ha I think it's, I'm, I'm a lot happier for it. I think I'd much rather be doing this. Than, and it's nothing against whatever game that I was supposed to be playing. I don't even remember what it was. But, um, but the fact that I get to do this is very, very nice. And, like, there shouldn't be anything stopping me from being able to do this. I mean, technically, the the enemy... The, the My biggest enemy, as we were saying before, is myself. And the only thing stopping me from doing things like this more often is just my own feelings against it. And I think the feelings... Let, let's speak totally candidly for a moment. Let's speak what's on our minds. And I was feeling like I didn't want to do this because I have this fear... I have this fear of failing. I have, I, I don't necessarily have a main definition of what failure is, but a particular failure that I'm particularly afraid of is not putting on a good show, not entertaining, not being able to connect with everyone or the internet or nobody that I want to. And I feel like a part of that really comes down to, it's another problem that I always have, is what my standards are, or what I'm hoping to get out of things. And oftentimes, I can be very tunnel vision sometimes. I literally can't, like, comprehend what is around me because I'm too focused on the thing in front of me. And so that has its advantages. It's not bad. It's not good either. It's not terrible. It's not awesome. But I will have these moments where I completely lose track of things. And so when when you're somebody like that, not that I'm special, but if anybody else experiences it like that out there, then I totally vibe with it. But when you're in a situation like that,
what winds up happening is this is there's like a there's like a physical component to it where like I can actually like I don't pay attention to the things in front of me until they're actually like right in front of my eyesight. But there's also an emotional aspect to it too. I think where I will often lose sight of original goals of mine, things that make me happy, or perhaps I'll miss what it is about something that made me happy or made me feel good about things. Like, um, for example, for the longest time, I didn't buy snacks. I didn't buy coffees. I didn't buy drinks at the store. I didn't do any of that stuff. I, I, I would have thoughts of like, man, I could really go for a coffee from Starbucks right now. Or, hey, I just saw a vitamin water in the store and I could really go for that right now. But my mind would always go like, you don't need to spend money. Don't spend money. Don't spend money. You shouldn't be spending money. And my focus for most of my college career, because I was on a budget and I needed to save, I needed to save money at the time because I didn't have any sort of income. I worked a, I worked a job in college for a while. I had my co-ops that paid for things, but that mostly went to loans and living expenses. And I also had uh, a job at my school's rec center for a while as a welcome center attendant. And I got paid a little bit for that. But like, for the most part, I had to watch how much money I was spending because I knew that if I spent too much of it, then I would run out. And I don't wanna, and I'm a, I'm a very proud individual. I really don't wanna have to ask my parents for money if I don't have to, and God bless, you believe in God. I don't know why I said God bless, but for all, um, what's what's like a, what's like a non Christiocentric way to say God bless? Thank goodness, thank goodness, whatever goodness is. Thank karma, whatever it is, thank goodness that I had that opportunity to be w where I am now, that I'm okay with that. Wait, if you spend money, you'll run out of it? So long as you don't, so long as with the spending outweighs the, 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 the what's the opposite of spending? Oh my God, the earning, the earning versus the spending. It's basic economics. That's how the economy works. But yeah, so like I would be super, I was really, really, really stingy, I'd say. Dara, I, I was calling myself, you know, I was trying to be frugal, but it really wasn't frugal. Because what I would find is, I would be in moods where I was like, man, I just really wish that I had like, I really wish I stopped for that coffee. Cause I was going through some really, really tough times in college and, ooh, excuse me. And I didn't realize till later that, you know what? It's okay to spend that $3 on that coffee or that $4 on the vitamin water or the $6 on that sandwich that you could really go for right now, even though you know you have food at home and you don't necessarily need to buy the food now. It just, it feels good. It makes me feel good. Thrifty is another way to put it. I like that term. Thrifty feels good. I, I am thrifty. I like to go to the thrift store. Why spend 10 to $12 on a glass that I can buy for a dollar at a thrift store? I mean, it literally doesn't make sense. You might as well go to the, take the time to go to the thrift store. But seriously, though, I I spent I spent a really long time. I mean, for good for good reason. I mean, the benefit of it was that hey, I didn't run out of money. I, I don't think I ever I don't think there ever came a point in time where I was in the negative that I couldn't pay for things. Which again, thank goodness I had that. I'm not you know I'm not like not everybody has that opportunity to. But I had I worked six months my sophomore year of college, six months of my third year of college. Um, and then I had some other jobs here or there. So I, there was always some cash flow and I could always fall back on my parents. It's, it's a, it's a lucky thing. It really is. But I was, I lost my turn of thought. Where was I going with that? Where was I going with that? Something about spending money. Oh, it was the tunnel. It was the whole tunnel vision thing. It's like the whole, um, but I was so focused on not running out of money. Running out of money is bad. Very bad things. Avoid the bad things. That's what my mind kept going towards. My mind kept telling me, you need to avoid the bad at all costs. You can't fail. You shouldn't fail. Do not fail. Do whatever you can to maximize not failing. And that meant working your ass on in spin school. Spending as little money as possible. And realizing that after a while that there was a certain point of failure that I wasn't taking into account as. I would get really stressed out about things. I didn't have enough moments where I was just kind of treating myself to feel good about what I was doing. I like, I remember entire weeks of time where it was just the grind, day in and day out. I wouldn't, I'd eat my shitty food at the fraternity house, all fried garbage and whatnot. I'd look at myself in the mirror and think that I look disgusting, uh, and then I feel tired, and then I'm groggy, and then all, then I just get to do it all over again the next week. It's a terrible feeling. I hated that feeling. And to be honest, I still get bits and pieces of those feelings. I don't think I ever 
quite completely healed from those days. Uh, but maybe maybe if I go talk to somebody, it'll help out there. Again, something something we're looking into, speaking totally candidly. But um, I lost sight of it at the time. I was focused so much on not failing. It was like a feel of fear of failure or even like be, trying to be a perfectionist, so to speak, without the perfection. Because I don't think I'm... I don't think I'm anywhere close to perfection. But I was so focused on the whole not failing of it all that I forgot to think about the big successes. Um, or the small successes either. But most importantly, the small things. It's the little things. The whole, like, um... Gosh, it's I love the spring, and I love the summer. Because when the spring and the summer happens, the trees are blooming. Luckily, I don't suffer from allergies. Trees are blooming. Flowers are blooming. It's, it's a great thing. And I legitimately have the opportunity to stop and smell the roses every once in a while because I because I have to consciously remember I'm looking for small things. The way that my mind works is I have to be focused on something to really remember it or it becomes so ingrained in me that it's almost like muscle memory. And that doesn't happen to me too too often, but after a long enough time, eventually it will. But there has been a long enough time where I told myself focus on the small things that I can now focus on the small things even just for a little bit of time. I was walking around with Anna in the city the other day. We were vibing. I don't remember what we were doing specifically, but we were we were taking a walk. Um, I think it was on Friday. I think we went out for ice cream. Oh, no, no, she got back from the flower show. I met up with her. We got some ice cream. Uh, we walked back and we were walking around and I think we walked past uh, just a house. Just house had some flowers out front and I noticed one of them was, one of them happened to be a rose. Somebody had a rose bush. And I was like, hey. Rose bushes are cool. I should stop and smell the roses. And I'm gonna be honest, I've used rose products. I've used rose soap. I've I've drank in rose tea. I have um I've smelled rose scented potpourri that somebody had in their bathroom once upon a time. Um and I was like, but I've done it. I don't think I've ever actually smelled a rose. And I mean, I'm not a flower professional, but it had spikes on the stem and it was red and it looked like a rose. And so I took my shot. I was like, excuse me, dear. I have to go smell these roses. And I, I leaned on in and I was like, and lo and behold, it really smelled like, like I, I, for a while, I have this distrust of certain industries. And I think that what the industry is telling me something tastes like or smells like is not exactly what it tastes like. For example, banana products they don't really taste like bananas that i can buy in the store but that's for another reason but i'm like does a rose really smell like this does it really taste like this i don't really know but i was able the other day just to stop and smell a rose and i was like wow this smells exactly like the the rose scented soaps and whatnot that i've gotten from the store and i had this i had this feeling of like just ooh, like good I had this feeling of good that like welled up inside me. I was like, wow, this is, I experienced something like this. And it just, for lack of a better term, it just felt, it felt good. It felt satisfying. Those are thorns, not spikes. Did I say spikes? Well, thorns are kind of spiky, but spikes are kind of thorny, but they are thorns. Spikes are like long and, spikes are like nails. Yeah, no, they're definitely, definitely thorns. Appreciate the, appreciate the correction there. The Swift's correction. Lest I be spewing bullshit on this show. Somebody's gotta keep me in line. If I talk so much like this, who knows what might happen. But yeah, it was like... It was satisfying. But like, I feel like it's kind of tough sometimes to really... Like, when you're so caught in the... In the hustle and bustle of everyday life and everything happening. You're 9 to 5, you're... 8 o'clock to 12 o'clock. 9 to 12 at night when you do your streaming and stuff or whatever your schedule may be you can sometimes lose sight of things and i felt at least recently i, I genuinely felt that recently i don't want to like i don't want to call it burnout because i feel like people who experience burnout are a lot farther off than me i've only been working for like a year i just finished school i'm only 24 i'm a young person i shouldn't be experiencing burnout but like i had this moment where i was like man I'm not enjoying what I'm doing right now. I need to change things up a bit. And this isn't like a macro level thing. This is more on my, this is more like a like a mid micro level thing. It's not like oh my god, I hate my job. Oh my god, I hate my hobbies. Oh my god, I hate my life. No, it's not. It's not that crazy. Thank goodness. Um, but it was more along the lines of like, 
what I plan on doing this week is not what I'm into or what I'm about to experience this next week or this next month or whatever, I'm not looking forward to. I need to do something about it. And like, I don't really, I can't even, I, I can't even think of the specifics of it all, but it's just, it's that feeling. It's that feeling of feeling like, oh man, what I'm about to experience, we need less of this. It's the same shit as last week, and the same shit as the week before, and the month before, and the year before, but it's, it's, got, a, it's got a time for a change. And I don't know if that's, it's definitely not specific to my personality, but I find that I go through phases. And I would describe these phases just like, I will be doing something for a while, and then all of a sudden, I will not be doing it for a while. I will, for example, go through phases of watching television or different forms of media. There are times where I never turn on YouTube and never turn on Netflix, none of that stuff. I will instead just have music in the background when I'm doing things. I'm currently in a phase now where if I weren't streaming right now, I'd probably be watching Netflix or something like that. I'd be, I'd be watching a video, something that I'm trying to catch up on. I know my boss has recommended me watching Community, which is a show that I think Anna wants to watch, so I'll probably, I'll probably wait to watch it with her. Um, there's, there's that, and I think there's probably a bunch of other things on there too that I can't quite recall. But there were moments like, there were moments like those, where I was like, if I, if I wasn't doing this now, I'd be occupying myself with that. But I didn't want to do that. That's not, that's not what I was talking about. Sorry, I, I mixed my trains of thoughts together. I was thinking of the dissatisfaction of life thing, not in general, just specifically, just micro level stuff with uh, with the, uh, you know, actually, I'm just gonna. I'm gonna take a pause for a moment. My mind's running really fast. It's getting a little hot here. I'm just gonna take a small pause, drink some water. I hope y'all don't mind. Mashed taters obtained. Successful. Just gonna vibe for a moment. I've been trying, I've been realizing more and more recently I will hit these walls, I will go on my tangents, and I will hit these walls, and I'll go like off the rails. I don't really like going off the rails like that. Alright. I felt good. That was very pleasant. Alright. Back to it then. Um, yeah. I think I would need to watch some- Be a kitten. Take a small pause. Hey! That's another nice pun there. We get good things for puns. <laughs> hey. How's it going? I like puns. I like, I like, I would say that I'm good at making puns, but it's all context based. I'm like, um, like I have to, I have to be experiencing something. Like I can't just come up with a pun randomly. I have to be, it has to be in the moment. It's all context based comedy is the way that I would describe it. Meatball Girl says the taters are infused with soy milk, a stick of butter, and salt and pepper. Nice, 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 nice. We like that. Sounds very flavorful. I know what I'll usually do is, um, let's see, what was it? You made mashed potatoes. How would I make mashed potatoes? I'm pretty basic. I don't think I would put all that stuff in it. I probably, I'd go, for me, I'd go, I probably wouldn't add a lot of salt. Only a little bit of salt. And if it's gonna have salt, it's gonna be garlic salt. Cause, oh, Anna and I love garlic salt so much. Garlic salt is like a, it's a staple in this, in this life we live. Um, there's also, what else do what we put in that? I'd probably be, do less butter, just because I don't need, I, I just like, I don't like using so much butter. Um, especially because if it's the salted stuff, then it just adds more salt to there. In which case, you probably didn't need the salt anyway. Um, and the mashed potato, the potatoes? Oh, I one time made purple mashed potatoes because they were selling purple potatoes at the store. Loved it. It was great. When in doubt... Insert a limerick. Wait, I need to remind myself what a limerick is. But first, I want to kick this cookie. There we go. Cookie has been clicked. Where's a the limerick again? I know it's a device thing. What is it? Oh my god. Foam, why do you make me unlock? Limerick. Whoa. Limerick. I know it's a type of poet thing? Maybe? Limerick. A form of verse, usually humorous and frequently rude, in five-line, predominantly anapestic trimeter with a strict rhyme scheme of A-A-B-B-A, in which the first, second, and fifth line rhyme, while the third and fourth lines are shorter and share a different rhyme. 
That's really specific. I'm very glad I looked that up. I did not realize that a limerick was that specific. Wow. It's a very, very specific form of poetry. Like a haiku. Maple Garth says, it's saltless butter, we think. You can forego the salt on top of that. The butter's purpose is to make it creamy and not dry. That's a fair point. I think, what's a good substitute for butter? Anna's recommendation is oat milk. I, I like oat milk. Just a couple splashes? Recommendations from the dearest. Thank you, dear. Are you feeling okay, by the way? Oh, okay. No, you're totally good. I'll probably end in a little bit anyway, so I apologize for the for the volume. I'll lower my voice a little bit. Okie dokie. Sorry about that. But, in any case, yeah, I didn't realize, so like haikus, actually speaking of haikus, when Anna and I went to the Franklin Institute the other day, uh, the Franklin Institute, no, no, it wasn't the Franklin Institute, we went to, we went to the art museum, we went to the art museum, and I really wanted to buy something for my youngest brother, because he graduated from high school, and I figured I should give him something for college, and honestly, I didn't know what to get him for college, he's usually like, really really into like certain video games he's really into certain he's, he's a big uh plushy kind of guy which i totally respect uh but i was like i want to get him something unique something that people don't normally get him and so as we were going through the museum we had found that um i, I had found these dice they were called high cubes high cubes and uh, essentially they're dice that you roll them and each side of the die has a particular word on them and i think the words were I, I don't exactly know how it worked i didn't actually open it up and read it but the idea is you would take these dice and roll them and it would create a haiku in front of you and i was like wow something about uh attempting to predict the future or make sense of your surroundings and situations through the means of poetry struck me as a very college thing to do because i know i didn't do a lot of poetry in college i think i did a lot more poetry in a uh, high school than I did in college because English classes and English classes would tell you to do so. On the note of the taters though, actually no. No, I oh oh Mikogra actually did use oat milk on top of it. If you use oat milk alone then you basically just get potato cereal, which is weird and doesn't work too well. That's why you only use a splash just to do it. Do these peanuts smell good? Not as bad as the other ones. Thank you, dear. We were having a conversation on the way back from... Uh, actually, we ran into my boss. My boss lives, like, right down the street from me. But we ran into him on the way back from going shopping today. And uh, somehow we brought up snacks in conversation. Because uh, we were talking about going grocery shopping. And so my boss was saying how... Or rather, we were talking about the snacks that we have here. The snacks being, they have a bunch of different things. We've got fruit bars, we've got fig bar, we've got fruit bars, we got chips, we've got nuts, we've got there's popcorn in there, there's applesauce in there. There's a ton of different things in here. But like, I find it difficult to snack without um, snack without feeling bad about it. Like for example, if I just keep eating chips all the time, I'm gonna feel bad about my sodium intake. If I just keep eating uh, fruity things all the time processed fruity things, then I'm just gonna feel bad about my sugar all the time. And so I want something that feels like, like, that feels very positive, that feels very, very good to eat. Um, and I mean, Anna buys, like, Anna, Anna's usually in charge of getting the snacks and stuff. She's really, really good at identifying, like, um, nutrition value of stuff. And uh, I very much appreciate it. I'm very bad at identifying that stuff. Meatball Girl saying on the note of the taters again, if you use a splash and it's basically just a flavoring, it doesn't really help with the dryness, basically no purpose. Can you tell you're a cook? Lol. I think Anna has some words with you and has some disagreements there. However, everyone's got to, everyone's got different ways to cook. What's that, sir? No, no, I got no complaints for Anna's taters. However, I think we should use the ube, or the, the Japanese potatoes, because they're sweet and I like sweet potatoes. Anna doesn't like sweet potatoes, so that's my complaint. Are they really? Are they, wait, are they actually like really healthy for you? Ooh, I like sweet potatoes. 
I think I made mashed potatoes one night. I went to the store. I just, I just wanted potatoes. And so I found Japanese sweet potato and I was like, oh man, well, what does this taste like? I've never had a Japanese sweet potato and oh my God, it's like candy. Oh, it's so tasty. Oh, I need to check in on my, check in on my counts. See how they're looking. I need two in to start the white and the top of the R. I am gonna finish one more row of my embroidery and that's where I'll call it for the night. It'll probably take me 10-ish more minutes, I think. 10-ish, 10, 10, 15-ish more minutes. We'll see, we'll see. That's what I'll do. And then I'll call it an even. Meatball Girl usually goes for the rust tomatoes because they're cheap and easy to work with. I agree, but they're not as sweet as those Japanese potatoes or the purple ones that I found one time. Actually, you can get purple rusted potatoes. I think I made, uh, I think I made mashed I potatoes that one one time. Purple potatoes have the highest, um, has something to do with its nutrition. It has like a higher something else. The, uh, the purple potatoes? Yeah. Is it what makes them purple? Maybe. Interesting. I think because of it, it also has a higher metal content though. Oh, you know, because I think purple colors are caused by, I don't know. But I think the reason why, um, it might be aluminum, perhaps? Like, trace trace amounts of aluminum? Perhaps I could be totally talking out of my ass about that no, one. I mean, when you but I think... Out of the ground, everything always has, like, some kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think the reason I say that is because I think sapphire and ruby, which are the ba the same metal, they're the same um, crystal. They just have different impurities in them. But I think it's aluminum-based. I could also be wrong about that. I am not exactly sure. If there's anyone, like, really, really into gems out there, please correct me if I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure it's an animal gem. 90% of all Japanese food is favorable, even compared to the rest of East Asia, be it nutritious foods or treats. LOL. I do like rice. I do like Japanese rice. Let's see. What do I really like? I like Japanese sake. Oh, actually, I like sake in general. I wouldn't say I necessarily only like Japanese sake. I really only had Japanese sake from what I can tell. Flavorable. Oh, the food is flavorable. Flavorable. Well, I think a lot of a lot of what shows up in and and I could be saying this totally wrong, but I'm uh, it's for lack of a better term like like Eastern foods I'd find like uh, your Chinese restaurants, your Japanese restaurants, your Thai food restaurants, your this that and the other thing, etc. Which I love, I love, I love Asian food so much. Is I find that there's a bit of a there's a savory aspect to a lot of the food that they make, and a lot of it comes from mushrooms. I love mushrooms in my food. And uh, I, I'm always like really, really like surprised to find that. Wow. So whatever I'm eating here is like, uh, I mean, I don't necessarily know what's in it. It could have like monosodium glutamate or just a shit ton of salt in it or soy sauce or something like that. The but soy like, sauce is usually very, very salty. Yeah, the soy sauce for the salt. But I feel like usually um, I can find that th there's at least some, I've been to a ramen place before. I went to a ramen place one time. I have no idea what kind of mushroom that was in it, but it was it was tough. It made like a crunching sound. It's not a crunch, but like a like a like a it's not even a crunch sound. It's like a imagine biting into a rubber pipe. It made that sound, and uh, it tasted tasted straight up like meat. It tasted awesome. It was super savory, and I was like, wow, I didn't think it could taste this good, and it was wonderful. And I thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed it. It was lovely stuff. There's a reason shiitake is actually common in the States. What's the reason? Please, enlighten me. I think I know the one you're talking about. Forget its name now. Ooh. I also follow, I follow, so I use TikTok, um, like many denizens of our society, and I have fallen onto MycoTalk, which is, which is, um, TikTok talking about, TikTok talking about mushrooms, and, oh my god, I love it. I like to talk about it at work. I like to talk about it with my pals. I like Myco Music. It's where you make music with mushrooms, be in their um, electrochemical signals, their brain signals. Um, you can also do just mushroom cooking in general. There's one, there's one girl who I um, who I follow on TikTok. God, I don't remember her name. She's she's a dark skin. She has glasses. She's got curly hair. She's got a really awesome smile. I think she's always wearing lipstick. And she's always so happy and bubbly. I love her personality, and I think. But she's a forager, and I think she goes out and she finds like different like like uh, flowers in the field and herbs and whatnot. She also does mushrooms too, I think. I, I actually I have a recipe for nochino, which is a black walnut based liqueur that I grabbed that I that I know of from actually I learned about nochino from her channel. I didn't actually use the recipe from her um, from her account. 
But um, I learned about Nochino through through her, because there were black walnuts that grow around her, and she's like, "You can make this thing, and it adds like awesomeness to your cocktails and drinks." And I was like, "Sweet." And that, oh, I wish I, I wish I could remember her name. She's awesome. She's awesome. Also, like I've always imagined, I've always wanted to go out foraging before, like for mushrooms or anything like that. But honestly, I don't want to pick the wrong ones and kill myself because I was stupid about it. And I'm not gonna try to do that. I need to go one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, past the O. So I should have a certain number total, which I will count later. Excuse me while I focus on this count for a moment. One. I really wish that I had a camera angle to be able to showcase the embroidery that I'm doing here. Um, eventually, I plan on doing a little more research into the filmography as well. It's actually really cool. Anna was at the flowers, the Philadelphia Flower Show the other day, and she found a stand that was advertising a camera shop that offers photography classes. And I was like, yo, I could be totally into that stuff. Because I'm like, I mean, as always, I'm really... I'm always on the lookout for ways to improve the stream experience to be able to show essentially what's going on uh, when more things happen. Consumption? Oh, yeah, I have the rest of this beer. Take a big old swizzle of that. It's um, actually, if you're curious about the beer, it's the last one I had in the fridge. Um, Samuel Smith's Organic Chocolate Stout. I've been suckling on that for the past three and a half hours. Because, uh,. I don't drink I don't drink beer very fast. I don't really drink things very fast anyway. He's gotta savor the experience. Some would call that a plus. I would call it a plus. Let me just make sure I have these counts right. Um I need a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Gotta go back. We'll show a pro final product in the end. Um so far. It's not a final pro actually I do have a final product here, because I finished one already. I'm working on some crests for cosplay, because Anna and I are doing a cosplay thing, which I can't share any more details about, so it won't. You're just gonna have to find out later. That'll be cool. I guess, dearest, when they finally do the release thing, we should totally post it to the cosplay channel. I think that'd be awesome. Yeah. I'll just it up really see how any more info in this year? I'm sure we'll be notified. They must. They've been pretty good on notifying us of things in general, which I very much appreciate. I am, would much rather somebody over communicate with me than under communicate. I get a word to say about my property manager, who most definitely does the option that I'm not a fan of. Meatball Girl says she's much more sa much more savory than me, and the vodka bottle is proof of that. You're, you're much more savory than me? What do you mean by savory? Vodka isn't savory, is it? Fist bump. Savory. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, you're more savory than me. As in, as in you taste more like meat than me? Is that, is that what we're saying there? Is there another definition of savory that I'm not aware of? Because that makes me think that we're talking about how, our, how we would taste if we bit each other, which, uh, I'll be honest, I don't know. No, you mean like, no, I mean like, don't chug, lol. Oh, like, don't chug? Oh, oh, like, savor, oh, like, savor the flavor. Oh, I see, I see, savor I, I get you, I get you now. Yeah, I like, uh, I mean, that's fair. I mean, you you also have, you have a, a bottle of vodka. Meatball Girl's got a bottle of vodka that I think, I don't remember if I commandeered that one for her or whether she got that on her own, but uh, usually for when I come over and make some cocktails. I think we've made a, mas uh, a mule before, we've done that, I think. I don't know what else. You combine it with other things. I think I had a brain fart. Oh, it's okay. I get brain farts all the time. The, um, but yeah, I mean, like, to be perfectly fair, I don't know why you're ch if you're chugging vodka, I don't know why. I feel like that's something that personally I would- I mean, unless you like, you know, if you're just trying to make something alcoholic, vodka is a wonderful, wonderful way to go. And, um, I particularly like, um, vodkas that are potato-based, because I kind of like pot I don't know, I- I know vodkas are like, triple, quadruple, quintuply, octillily distilled, but like, I swear, 
that the local vodka, Skunk Town, from uh, one of, uh, from around my hometown, I genuinely think that that tastes like potatoes. And I don't know why, but I feel like it do. And I'm gonna stick with that. I need to push through my stitch needle because I've run out of space. I've run out of space on this needle. It'd be really cool if I could get, if I could get a camera from my perspective to be able to put in front so we can watch the embroidery as it happened, I would do that, but then I wouldn't have something for my face. It's, I only have one nice camera and it's that one. So, um, and also I was running low on time this stream because my, um, my boss needed some help with something at his, um, for work related thing. And only I knew how to fix it. So it took me like a few minutes to figure it out, but, uh, we got it. We got it. Viva Girl says, you, she usually just does screwdrivers when drinking with your online friends. Imagine Japanese sweet potato based vodka. Everything <laughs> sounds like something you'd find in the Tokyo backstreets. Dude, I would love that. There must be sweet potato based vodka out there. There must be. And I'm going to look that up in a moment as soon as I get this freaking needle through. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, you got it. My hands are getting all sweaty. Can't push these needles through. Cannot push these needles through. Ah! This is what I get for trying to push needles through with my bare hands, my bare fingers. It takes time. Please excuse me. Everything else doesn't work. Oh, the other comment Meatball Girl made was uh, that nothing else really works well with the vodka. I mean, I think any fruit juice works well with vodka. You could do um, you could do your orange juice. Obviously, the orange juice and vodka. Cranberry Excellent. And Screwdriver. You can do, yeah, cranberry, orange juice, dash of grenadine. If you got some grenadine in your area, uh, you can buy that probably from Walmart, I think. Yeah, you definitely can. Um, you can do pineapple. So you can do pineapple juice, orange juice, and um, vodka for, I want to say that's a Bay Breeze, if I'm correct in saying. Uh, you can do, um, I think it's, oh, it's orange juice. Ooh, what is it? I think it's just orange juice and cranberry juice is technically a madras, I think? I don't remember. Found some. It's called shochu. Oh, shochu. Is that sweet potato based? Oh, I've heard of shochu before. I did not realize that that was sweet potato based. I must be thinking of something else. Oh, come on. Get through, you stupid stitch. Oh, I got you. Yes. Oh, my goodness. But it's only one. I need multiple. Oh, my gosh. I wound this one tight. Oh, my goodness. That's really tight. All right, I'm not going to struggle with this. I'm not going to struggle with this. Come on. Ah, sorry, I'm distracted. I need to get this dish through. Ah, I'm struggling. Anyway, quote from Google. Shochu is a Japanese distilled beverage, typically distilled from rice, barley, sweet potatoes, buckwheat, or brown sugar, though it is sometimes produced from other ingredients such as chestnut, sesame seeds, potatoes, or even carrots. Okay. So it's like a... It's like... It's like vodka in the sense that it can be like distilled from a lot of different things or or many at once. So in that regard, it's very similar. All right, I need to do another round on this. I did not get that very far in and now I feel bad about it. Uh, actually, you no, know it's fine, I'm, I'm fine with it. I'm gonna cut that seam loose. I got some orange I gotta finish. Hopefully next time I do a stream like this, if I do any more, I think I really like, I really like this embroidery thing. I think I've got, I, I've become a big fan of this and I would love to do more of it. Um, more so than just, uh, for cosplays. So I'm thinking about doing it some more often, and, but I honestly, I wouldn't make it a thing that I do on stream until I figure out a better angle for it, which currently, naturally I'm not. All we got is this. All we got is that for now. Oh. Got a little bit left of this. And then we'll be good. Would be... Oh, sh whoa. Words. Nibal Girl saying she really wants to try the shochu. Wouldn't be surprised if Yuri has some. Dude, if you can find any, let's order some. Let's get it shipped over. I'd be happy to do so. I definitely want to try that. Sweet potato-based spirit. I like that idea. I wonder, you know, I wonder if it's in my big old cocktail book. Um, the one that I have um, with all the info on various different types of spirits. I think it's called the Ultimate bartender's guide or something like that i don't know it's the biggest book that i own it's 
It's freaking dangerous. It's absolutely dangerous. It's got spirits in there that I've never even heard of, and like, if I were more a bookie, I'd read through it and whatnot. Actually, one of the things that I really, really need to catch up on is my backlog of cocktail recipes because I, I I really I love I love receiving cocktail recipes. I like to see what other flavors are out there and whatnot. And one day I hope to be able to make them all myself. But I have a hard time indexing on them. So like I have this app that I use and you enter in the recipes and you can index them by ingredient, you can do by flavor, you can do by category, and it's it's awesome and it works great. And can even scan recipes. So it's got some machine learning thing that they use to be able to for character recognition and it makes recipes really easy to add. The problem is I don't have the diligence to be able to put all every recipe that I get from people into the app so I can't go back and find them. Now, as of now, I know where to, I know what messages to go to, I know what channels to go to to be able to find all the recipes and stuff. It wouldn't be difficult for me to put them all down there, but at the time it would take to put them all into my recipe book so I can get back to them later, which I really, really want to do because I've kind of found that I'm running out of, like, I don't know, the whole finding a random cocktail in a book or finding it from the internet is kind of... I don't know, there's something that feels like it's missing there on Wednesdays, and so I'm trying to figure out a change for that. But one of the things that has to come is a, a book that ha a book that I have with all the recipes that I've found from people. Because what I'd really like to do is be like, hey, I got this recipe, this is where it's from, it was suggested by so-and-so, and like, you know, say thanks for it, because I, I appreciate it. I really appreciate people like, just kind of, just chatting in general, I, I like it conversations must keep going plus it gives all of us the opportunity for those of us who drink or explore flavors in general to be able to figure out what else there is out in the world which is that's what it's all about it's all about new flavor combos like um i think my friend sent me a combo the other day um and it was i don't know what else was in it but i knew it had fennel in it like like a fennel flavored i don't know if it's a syrup or maybe they actually had like mushed up fennel in it i don't know but like i definitely want to try it I just need a means to do so. So, oh, by the way, says me, bell girl. I'm planning on going to Europe by the end of this year at the latest, specifically Birmingham, UK, and Paris, France. Want me to pick anything up for you while you're there? I don't know. Let's chat about that a little bit. I don't really have anything off the top of my head. If you find like unique cocktail spirits, I mean, so I say cocktail spirits, but moving over liquor from other countries is a complicated thing so i wouldn't ask you to get me any liquor based things but i'm sure there are other things out there that are mixologically wonderful if anybody anyone asks why you're doing embroidery say it was recommended by so and so that's a good one i like that i like that although <laughs> i don't i don't know any people named so and so but uh and it also wasn't by recommendation so technically i'd be lying and i'm not a lying individual of course not I wouldn't lie. I wouldn't lie to you. I wouldn't lie to you. And if I did, it's probably because I'm genuinely missing something. <laughs> that or, well, I'm just not all there. Which happens. In any case, I have put the final stitch that I plan on putting into this tonight. So, let's take, let's take a moment to check and see what we've done. First off, cookies. Look at all the cookies. We made so many cookies. We've got 63 octillion cookies. That's great. But we've been staring at that screen forever. So let's go back here. So what I was working on is I have been working on the crest from Oron High School, the host cub. This is the crest that I made first. It took me like a month or so to make. Um, it's all hand embroidered. And I'm really, really proud of it. It looks really cool. And so I need two of them. So I've been starting to work on the other one. And I started, I think, up here today. I was up here today, and I made, I think, four rows. That's from a mildly distracted Cameron, which is just what I was doing. I was mildly distracted. I was playing Cookie Clicker and making images with AI, which was really cool. I guess I gotta do that again sometime. Ugh. In any case, I um, I have to do the rest of it. So I have to make the entirety of re the rest of this one by the end of the month. So I will be busy. Um, apologies in advance for all the things that, of course, everybody loves and holds me accountable for, which is like putting up videos and um, you know, making thumbnails and stuff. It might be, it's it's probably going to be a bit delayed this week. 
because I need to prioritize. Actually, things are going to get a little weird in general over the next, like, month or so. I mean, I say that more as a forecasting type thing. Anna and I are moving in August, so there's going to be a lot of moving things around. I still need to figure out the logistics of moving, like, literally all of my worldly belongings. Um, that'll be fun. And we also have this thing we need to finish by the end of the month. So if things are a little delayed, I apologize. We'll, we're working with our best of it. So what? It's basically a one-man show. So... That's just how it'll be. But in any case, aside from everything else, I'm happy, like, I like to do it anyway. It's it's enjoyable. It's just about, like it with most things, it's about finding the time for it. And I'm actually, like, super glad that I was able to find the time just to, like, this is very, this is very chill stream. This was nice. I think, I forgot that Cookie Clear had such nice music done by C418, who did the music for Minecraft as well. This is, this is great. Thank you, everybody. I'm gonna, I'm gonna close things up now. But uh, this has been wonderful. This has been, like, super duper nice. Wow. And I'm so glad that we were able to make the. I mean, aside from all the progress, we don't necessarily need to worry about progress all the time. We can just worry about just doing things. And today, we clicked on cookies, we did some embroidering, and we had some fun. And I appreciate that. It was very nice. Sims Jeff is saying, plus we got a millisecond of seeing ketchup and mayonnaise fighting for custody. There is a single, probably two frames, of ketchup and mayo fighting over an actual custody of child i definitely said that word correctly in any case we'll worry about that also my camera just made me look really why am i looking so red camera what are you doing there's not night mode right? anyway i look very i look very warm right now anyway whatever that's okay in any case thank you everybody so much for coming along very much appreciated it it was this was really nice and somehow we were able to pull it off for four hours and honestly what more can you ask for but there's something like, nice like that Night night to everybody, if it's the night where you are, if it's not the night where you are, perhaps the sun is shining like it kind of looks like it's doing on my face right now. I don't know what happened. My, my, uh, camera. Don't do that. Eh, whatever. But if it's the morning where you are and the sun is shining, well, here's to a wonderful day ahead. And if it's the afternoon, have a good lunch. Maybe you're eating a sandwich. Peanut butter and jelly is ever pretty good. Pretty awesome. Thanks again, everybody. Party on till next time, y'all. Bye.